That's only one part of it. I mean, that, that's not the whole point I'm making. The piece was was meaningless. It said nothing about what station I'm on, what time. And the proof is in the pudding. I got no calls here right now. Nobody, they didn't say nobody saw that thing, huh? They didn't, they didn't say anything about the station. You're no, right about that. No, they did not. So what was the benefit to me, other than having to make up a uh, what they consider, I guess, a juicy story there? Uh, what, the, what, what was the benefit? The point was they, did, to be, they, they were showing your own me. life. They didn't no, show right, the they inside didn't. of my house. I guarantee you, when John Dutzbag did that piece on Channel 4, they showed all of my house, which is a very nice house. I got nice furniture. I got a beautiful house. They showed it. Here they showed that uh, bar mitzvah picture up on the wall from a very strange angle. And right. they showed me sitting there on the uh, sofa and John sitting on the sofa. And they showed me holding the dog. And then they kept promising they were going to show all this uh, other stuff, which uh, they didn't do. They didn't give much uh, much play to the show I at all. I got a whole room that's filled with hockey banners and with the sports memorabilia and with posters and my Ray Whitney blow up doll. All this other stuff. Uh, did they show any of that? No. No, they didn't. Uh, it was a piece of crap. Did they take film of all of it? Did yes, they of course they did. They were in there for like uh, an hour at least. Well, they obviously could have done a better job. Okay, have a great day. Okay. Open line of date and all about Have a day. Well, George finally got his bonus, and Neil's getting some money he didn't even have no uh, know he had coming. So we sure don't want to talk to him today. I hate to break the news to you. There's no more uh, water. There are white water and uh, no more hearings today. No more investigating the president. Hate to break the news to you on that. Five six seven oh five six. Lines working or what? Hello. Hello. Are we back to this again? The phone is all screwed up. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know the nine three zero three thousand number. They don't even bother answering that. Yeah. But, um, I okay, hold me. on, hold on. You hear that? They're not even bothering. Did we get the other lines forwarded? What's going on here today? Robert's over there today. Oh, oh. 1026 at 560. Neil got out. Where the baggage is. Until we got the books to retake. That Kaplan from the Bahamas plunging his brains out at 10 o'clock tonight. Here's Kendall. Hello. Neil, how are you doing this morning? Okay, sir. You know, I saw your piece last night, and uh, I, I definitely think they did take a shot at you at the end about Footy, and he's definitely, you know, he's going to die here and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was kind of a shot at you, like yeah. you were just uh, kind of raping the town and yeah, getting like, out. Right, I've only been here on year 23 years, so I mean, I'm just an interloper, you know. I'm a carpetbagger right I mean, here. If anybody deserves to get out of here, it's you. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I, I just didn't understand it. It was, it was like, well, you know, well, we wish you well whatever you do, but tomorrow we're going to be talking to a guy who's <laughs> really got a commitment to this town. They never mentioned anything, by the way, about the money that I raised for charity for Camillo's House and Center One and what I'm doing right now. I mean, a, I, I don't really care whether they need me out to be a son of a bitch or a nice guy, but it was supposed to be the nice side of Neil. How come they didn't mention anything about the money I raised for charity here? Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that that uh, I definitely thought they should have mentioned your Center One campaign, especially now. And why didn't they say that, hey, you know, that you are going to be at Borders this weekend and that 
you are, you know, they, where you can get these CDs, right. where the money's going to. Right. I mean, that would have been a great plug for you. Mm -hmm. well, but but the point of it, what I'm trying to explain to you is the point wasn't for to plug me. It was to, for them to get my audience to tune in to help them during Sweet Week. That, that's what it's all about. Right. And also, I did, uh, I did see the game last night, and um, I think the difference in that game is that uh, we don't have any goaltenders. Right. I, I think that the passing he, the I mean, he let, in, he let in goals last night that were so embarrassing, plus the defense. I mean, when Eddie fell on his ass, when Chris has just walked right in here in that first goal, I mean, uh, what, what are we talking about here? It was nice to come back and get the point. Even your dogs are pissed off about it. We have an open line in day five, six, seven, oh. line. I mean, on the one hand, it's kind of a bittersweet thing. It's great to make that unbelievable comeback and wind up with a point and get the tie. But on the other hand, you're talking about some really sloppy garbage by the defense and the goaltending. The offense was dynamite. They were all over them like stink on stuff the whole game. But other than that, defensively, and that Sean Burke rhymes with jerk, with Kirk, awful. Just unbelievable. Here's Miami. Hello. Neil, how you doing, sir? Okay, sir. Neil, it's true what you said about that Channel 4 story that did argue. They even showed your vets. Right. And I was like, what? I mean, that, that was that was a piece where there was a lot of work put into it, and they went over to, uh, they, they showed, they didn't go over there, but I mean, they somewhere got footage of the skylines of Vegas and Toronto and Amsterdam and Rome and all the cities yeah. that I enjoyed traveling to during the seven months that I was off here. It was a really well-produced piece, as opposed to this thing, which I guess they just hyped up with all the promos and yeah. figured a lot of people would tune in. And, and I'll tell you what, Neil, I'll bet you any amount of money today when they show footy, they will say what time and which station he's on. Really? Oh, I'll bet you any amount of money on that. No, I'll be sure to miss that. You have a good one, Neil. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to promote somebody who's a radio personality, wouldn't it make a little bit of sense to say what station they're on and what time they're on uh -huh. and something like that? And what stations they've been on for the last 500 years? I mean, again, I, I guess I'm complaining too much. But I said to be a professional mobile mind. I've been able to understand why they're number one in news. I've never been able to understand that. They always are. I mean, even when that big fat bull bike was on there, they were the number one in news. And I guess maybe you could understand that because at least she was somebody that people knew who she was, even if she was a big fat dyke. But uh, other than that, what, what's the attraction over there? I never watch Channel 10 News. I, 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 I'll admit it. I will even watch Channel 7 News, which I try to avoid. I'll watch their news before I'll ever watch Channel 10. The only person over there that, to me, has any, uh, is Don No, the weather guy. He's great. He's got credibility. He's not a hysterical Brian Norcross panic guy. Don No is great. There's nobody like Don. No. But other than that, forget it. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. Neil? Yes? Are you saying that that Jonathan fellow is not your lover? That's what I'm saying. Does that mean you're available to him? Yeah, not for a, stre a screamer like you, though, sweetheart. Dade County open 56705. Oh, Here's a lady in Boca. Hello. Hello? Yes. Hi, how are you, Neil? Okay. You just spoke to my heart. That phone call you just had. Anyway, I'm not a first-time caller. In fact, I went to the funeral you had for that radio station that died. Right. So we're going back that far. It had 23 years. Hope you're here at least another 10 years. Being oh, yeah, selfish. sure. Mm -hmm. But that was good last night you did, but they, they should have done a little more on you. My significant other saw it, so it was very good. So, anyway, why don't you come to Boca sometime? No, thanks. Oh, no? No. Where are you going to be in Borders? Kendall. Kendall? Noon to two tomorrow. See you there. Not. We have an open line in uh, Broward. Pendus response here this morning on everything. 21 before 11. And on the piece last night, I was talking about this, about, uh, you know, the, these phones and about uh, prodding and puking and begging and pleading. That's what I do every day, every single day of my life. Every single day. You could be here on the air for 500 years. You could be here longer than Methuselah, and still every day is like the first goddamn day, especially the last few years. Every year it gets worse. Not because of me, but just because of this town, because that's the nature of the kind of people we got here. Real friendly, real outgoing, really got a lot to say, really, uh, you know what I'm talking about? I think you might. If you're not getting your job at radio in summer of 1960, WCGR, which isn't even on the air anymore, it's been off the air for years, Canandaigua, New York, 250-watt station. That was a more big-time place than this market right here. That, that's the kind of professionalism you have in radio and TV in this market. Here's a mobile in West Palm Beach. Hello. Roy! How's it going, Neil? Okay, sir. Roy! Oh, there you go. Listen, I missed the show last night. Was there anything even decent on it? No. Not at all? No, just the, the only thing, like I said, good was they showed the cap with the joints on it. But other than that... <laughs> Um, yeah, Whammy well, must have loved that one. And, and they had, they, there was nothing, uh, I wasn't saying anything. I mean, they, they showed inane clips from their show, in which I was saying absolutely nothing. 
We know it it probably is. I mean, a lot of times you tell it like it is, and a lot of people just can't handle that. Nah, they just, uh, it was just a fluff piece. They didn't care. They just wanted to use me to goose up their audience for the sweeps, and I'll never do it again. See, I would really like, I would like to do, and the, the reason being, because just with the whammy thing is abortive and poorly put together and presented as it's been. I was just telling George, I'm in Walgreens last night to refill a prescription in between periods of the hockey game. I zip over there, and there's a young, dark-complected lady behind the counter. I'd say in her very room, I see your TV show. You see, television has got this incredible power if you're on, number one, a real television station, and number two, you have some control, and you're able to go on there and really do something, which is what I would like to do someday. I'm not talking about doing some phony-ass show sitting up on the sixth floor at Pompano Park, and I hope that guy don't ever call me again, because I'm really pissed off about that. Call me at home with a bunch of bull crap. I'm talking about a real TV show on a real low station, and really getting on there and really saying something. Two open lines in Dade, one in that. Let me tell you about uh, 48 hours last night. Anybody watch that? No. Bloomfield Hills, that's the suburb of Detroit, Michigan. I, I, they spent the whole hour on that, which I thought was a little bit of overkill. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh-huh. But nevertheless, it was about these uh, teenagers who went to this one particular school. And the, uh, the main kid, the, uh, the one with the uh, thing on his lip, looked like a herpy to me. Anyway, he was, uh, they, and the, he, they were what, I guess 17? They were seniors, him and his uh, two or three uh, friends there. And then the girls were like, uh, what, 14, 15? I missed the beginning. I missed the seven. But certainly amply endowed to look uh, like maybe 16 or 17, at least. But nevertheless, so uh, the question was, uh, they had brought the girls to their house, and uh, he had uh, fed them some booze and had sex with them. And one of the three girls said, well, she wanted it. You know, she went there because she wanted it, and she really... And the other two girls, oh, no, he raped us and took advantage of us. And they went through this long, convoluted song and a dance. And by the end of the thing, this kid gets four and a half months in jail, gets his admission turned out at the University of Michigan, which just uh, broke his heart. And then the other t uh, two or three guys, they got two and a half months in jail, which I don't understand. Oh, they had a shorter penis? Is that what made it... Yeah. See, if you're going to commit a sexual offense, if you have a real short penis, you spend a very short amount of time, I guess. But to make a long story short, at the end of the show, Dan Rather stood there with a very serious look on his puss and talked about the fact that, oh, my God, teenagers are actually having sex in America. How do you like that? Oy. I don't believe it, but that's what he said. And, uh, this, and, of course, most of it goes back to the problem with the age of consent in this country, which is archaic and ridiculous. Now, I don't even know what the age of consent is. What is it, 18, 17? I think for heterosexuals, it's uh, 17. For homosexuals, it's 18. It's like 16, as long as you're not two years older or something. It's very it's convoluted ridiculous. and it's it's different by state. Because even, by even in England, remember that thing I read yesterday, that they're lowering, uh, for, for heterosexuals, it's 16, and they're going to be lowering for homosexuals the same thing, the 16, the age of consent. But, I mean, the idea that a high school girl who is 15, who may look like 18 and act like 18, that she's having sex, maybe she's a, uh, what, sophomore in high school? And a kid that's a senior that's two years older that he's having sex with her, that even if it was consensual, that it's statutory rape. It's so ridiculous, and such another example of the kind of ridiculous laws that we have in this country from the Stone Age. I mean, is there anybody out there who believes that if a 17-year-old guy is having sex with a 16-year-old girl or 15-year-old girl, that it's rape? Does anybody with a brain believe that? No. Got to be out of your mind, or vice versa. How about if a 17-year-old girl has sex with a 15-year-old guy? And that's what this whole story was about. All these kids whose lives, and then the girls and their families had to move because now they had this great stigma because everybody was making fun of them and calling them names, and they had to move to another town and another school and yada, 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 because uh, people are screwing around. That's uh, the way it works. And you know something? I think they're all full of crap. I, I don't believe the guys. I don't believe the girls. I think they're all full of crap because the girls kept coming back. It reminded me of that Sheldon Kennedy story with Graham James. Oh, yeah, the hockey player who was abused and is running all around Canada on his roller skates and uh, flitting around Canada, Sheldon Kennedy, the former hockey player, who claimed that he was molested by his hockey coach. But the point is that he was 18 and 19 and 20 and 22 and 23 and a big strapping young guy. And he, just, he kept coming back. Hey, Coach, how are you doing tonight? Let's crack out a couple of cold ones, huh? And maybe we can work up a warm one. He kept coming back. See, I'm sorry. I didn't believe it then, and I still don't believe it now. Don't tell me that somebody is raping or abusing you when you voluntarily keep coming back. Oh, well, it's psychological abuse. Yeah, right. See, I can understand in church where kids are forced, they're coerced by their families to come back, and the degree of shame is so great that they're not going to tell uh, anybody that Father O'Toole is uh, abusing them. 
trying to alter boys and little girls every now and then. That, that's a horse of a different fella. Uh, fella. <laughs> but, uh, but in this case, I'm sorry, I'm just not buying it. I think all those kids are full of crap. But they're all, all their ass in jail is what I say. Oh! Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. While you're on vacation, did you happen to hear the news on the Vatican? About what? That each employee got a $600 bonus. Who? That all the employees in the Vatican each got a $600 bonus. There was money lying around there. Yeah. You didn't hear about it? No, I did not. Well, thank God for that. The people of George got his bonus, and the people in the Vatican got their bonus. Oh! Let's hear it. I think bone is what he was talking about. We have an open line in the Broward to a grim start here this morning. Very, very grim. Well, I guess now that George got his bonus, the audience doesn't like that. They don't like when good things happen on the show. They they react much better to disaster. They don't like it when things are starting going a little bit on the... And believe me, if you want to hear problems, this place, I mean, we, we could go on from now until uh, 2525 and give you stories, including our sales department. And our sales manager, but we don't want to waste. We don't want to get you depressed on a Friday. Here's North Miami Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, you know, I uh, I travel a lot, and I pick you up on the internet. Uh huh. Yeah. And I was wondering, uh, now that I'm here in town, could you play, sometime maybe play the scooting lady or the bridge tender? No, no chance. Okay, we have all the datelines open. Five. I said there on the air last night on that piece on Channel 10. Ninety percent of the callers are morons. Of course, I'm not going to play that crap. Call up and talk to me, but I'm sitting here doing a talk show. I've already talked about 650 goddamn things here since 10 o'clock this morning. It's not even 11 o'clock yet. Talk to me about some of those. Or talk to me about some brilliant thing you got on your mind. Not, I don't care that you travel around and you hear it on the Internet. In fact, if you want, you can hear the Bridge Center on the goddamn Internet. It's on there. On your God.com. Isn't it? Air to me, that's a word. Meaning what? I didn't check it out, though. The, the Neil God site is gone. Maybe you get a... Oh, it's completely gone? A second opinion on that. Well, who cares show. about that? Eric is right. doing such a great job. Neil Rogers.com. You can find Neil Rogers. Uh, let me say it again. Neil Rogers.com. Eric is doing a great job with that. And whatever is on there, it's on there. And people that want to waste my time and kill the show and uh, almost insist that I play this old, tired stuff that we heard a million times before that isn't even slightly amusing anymore, the answer is positively, absolutely... No. Here's a mobile in Miami Lakes. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I am a Florida resident. I've lived here all my life. Yes. And I got about five years, and I'm pulling out of here, too. You're pulling out? I'm pulling, I'm pulling yeah. out. Yeah. Any, anyway, the most obnoxious people in stores, I'm talking about the counter health, the people that are in stores, traffic is a nightmare. Uh, people just don't care. No. Uh, you go, I've been to Seattle. I'm going to tell you, I don't know how I'm going to last another four years and a month and a half in this joint because every day, every week, every minute gets tougher and tougher and tougher to get a response. Everywhere I go, people listen to the show. I go into Publix last night for five minutes. 6,000 people will cost me that they all love the show. They listen. But to try to get a response, to try to get a, to communicate with these people down here, it's become an art that is impossible now. Yeah. Well, I saw the piece last night, and I thought it was... It was okay. The only thing is, when they, when they said, I want to show the softer side of Neil, I'm figuring that they're going to start talking about what you did with Camilla's house, right. uh, Center One, uh -huh. and then, you know, then they flash the picture of your bar mitzvah picture. Right. Leave a little bit. And of me holding my dogs, uh, you know, taking two steps for about three seconds, holding the dogs. Yeah, and, but it's uh, publicity, Tom. It's still... But, no, it's not publicity because they didn't say what station I'm on or what sure. time I'm on. They did me absolutely no good. Nothing. Zero. zippity doo -dah. That is Nothing. True. It, was hey, a, I, I it was a one-way deal. They were able to promote it and milk it and get a few of my people maybe to watch it, although I don't think too many. And uh, and that was it. Hey, I got one more question. Do no harm. Isn't that from the Hippocratic Oath? No, it's from uh, the Neil Rogers Oath. <laughs> and have a great day. Yep. Okay, we have an open line at Broward, all three in day. Today is the day for the music, baby. Oh! Let's have a party. We get all kinds of people to bring some food in here. We'll sit around, smoke stogies, have a party, because these people aren't into it today. Do they care about uh, 12 hours of Kenneth Starr yesterday? No. Do they care about Sam Dash puts this morning? No. Do they care about the 48 hours piece last night? No. Do they care about the goddamn thing on Channel 10 last night? No. Do they care George finally got his bonus? No. Do they care about anything in this town? No. No. So, Footy, you can stay here until hell freezes over, okay, Footy? Whatever the hell it is that you do for a living, besides talk to a bunch of prepubescent kids on what 100? Oh, yeah, tomorrow we're going to talk to somebody that's really got a commitment here. Great. I am just pleased as punch for that. 
1056 at 5. The Miami Gun Show at the Coconut Grove Convention Center. Open Saturday 9 till 5, Sunday 10 till 5. Admission is only $6 for adults. Children under 12 are free. Plus, at the Miami Gun Show, you can take the State Concealed Weapon Permit course for only $30, offered each day. Come to the Miami Gun Show this weekend before the new gun laws go into effect. Buy, sell, and trade at the Miami Gun Show. Open all day, Saturday and Sunday, this weekend, Coconut Grove Convention Center. QAM, the Neil Rogers Show, Lauderdale. It's Friday, you bastards. 560 WQAM, the datelines are dead as a doornail, probably, uh... Like I said, 5670560 oh, and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Miramar. Hello. Gracious, good morning. How are you? Okay, sir. Uh, I jumped on the line real quick because uh, Enrique Iglesias just showed his face on Donnie and Marie. So yeah. Not that I would be watching the show. I was channel for uh, I, I just I watched... understand. We believe you. Well, no, seriously. I was waiting to see the verdict on that trial, but... Uh, uh, I, I what just, time are they going to let that loose, by the way? Oh, they just announced that he's guilty second-degree murder. And uh, his wife, of course, is all upset. She's twirling in her sheets, but uh, guilty as charged. Did you see that one bitch out on the street with a sign that said, The Asians are invading our neighborhood? D-A? Yeah. No, seriously, I'm, I'm not, you're laughing. I'm not making that up. There was a black woman out there in that neighborhood, and it said the sign said, The Asians, D-A, Asians are invading our neighborhood. Sir, if I can put it this way, I don't care so much about bilingualism. Let's speak one English, one language, any language. Ebonics, well, right. One, yeah, pick one, one language, learn it uh, properly, and then if you can pick up a second one, great. Mm -hmm. But most people don't even speak one language properly. So, well, you, you know why, know. don't you? That's the American fucking way. <laughs> and, you, and you'll be having a nice weekend. We have an open line in Dade, one in Broward. Yeah, the... the, the, the Arabs, that's what it said. The Arabs are invading our neighborhood. D-A, the Arabs. Don't you remember? The British are coming, the British are coming. Remember that? Here's a mobile in uh, North Bay Village. Hello. Yeah, Neil? Yes, sir? Yeah, I moved here from Chicago, and I was wondering which sort of Spanish course should I take, because it's kind of hard to communicate with most of the people. I don't know if I should take Portuguese, Brazilian... Yeah, which one's, uh, no, I think a better universal. idea is just go back to Chicago. would be a real good idea. We have an open line in Dade, one in Broward, 5670560 oh, and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. You, you know how old and ponderous that gets? I mean, like I said only minutes ago, I'm talking about all this other stuff. They don't care about that. They want us to keep talking about bilingualism. I'm not interested, okay? Call up Sandy Payton. Call up that uh, lovely lady, that very butch lovely lady. Call her up on Waxy if she still can afford to pay those rates to stay on the air. Do we have any idea if she still is on the air? No. Do we care? No. Oh, I'm sorry. And how on? And whatever happened with that Will thing with Ann Bishop and her girlfriend all other, and Sandy? Anybody know about that? No. Yeah, this guy just moved here from Chicago. First of all, why anybody would move here from Chicago in the first place, you'd have to be out of your mind. I mean, the weather does suck up there most of the time, even in the uh, what's supposed to be the summer. But other than that, what a great city that is with a great downtown where everybody speaks English. And where the complexion is uh, kind of very much on the light mocha side. Not too dark. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. Uh, first off, you know, I thought it was great. The only one good thing about that uh, Channel 10 thing was they did show that hat like you were saying. Yeah. That was good. They showed it prominently and over and over and over again. And uh, if that's the case, if they were able to show it on a regular, uh, on, a, on, a, on a real honest-to-God network affiliate station, then how come Maddie Lesham over there at Whammy was making such a big song and a dance about it and acting like an overgrown child uh, because I had a cartoon uh, postcard on my cap with a bunch of joints on it from Amsterdam? I think they were afraid because if they somehow somebody complained, they didn't complain the, couldn't play the board. Lawyer fees? Yeah, that could be it. That's probably what it is. Mm -hmm. But, um, oh, I wanted to ask you, you know, on the, with the Center One campaign and everything like that, do they have the older CDs, too? Yeah, they got some. Okay. Um, was, do you have the phone number by chance? 563-3600. Great. And is that totally going to go towards, like, if I buy the old ones, is that going to go towards uh, this year's? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Don't forget, tomorrow's going to be the big test. I have a thing, you know, Duff comes in here before the show today. Oh, tomorrow should be really great down there. Borders and Kendall should be a great turnout. And I'm thinking, I didn't say anything, but I thought to myself, based on what? I mean, let's face it, these appearances that we've done on this radio station have been uh, pretty weak. But they've always been pretty good down there, Kendall, Cutler Ridge. Let me say it again.
the appearances that we've done on this radio station so far have been mighty weak. We did have a real good one at Pizza Loft. But Pizza Loft is kind of like an exception. It's kind of like our headquarters. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's not, not like in a shopping mall. It doesn't have that kind of foot traffic or anything. But we always do real well at Pizza Loft because we've been going there for many, many years. But, I mean, you know, not that we're not appreciative of people who let us come to their establishment, but like the big malls, have we been in most of the big malls? No. Do we have anything set up for December yet? You know, like between Thanksgiving and Christmas when people are going to be spending all their hard-earned money and they're going to be out there shopping like crazy till they drop and might actually uh, pick up some of our CDs and stuff? Do we have anything set up for, like, uh, middle or late December? No. But screw Ann, she was down here just the other day. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I won't take care of it. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm going to tell you something, Luann. If brains were dangerous, you'd be the safest bitch on the face of the earth. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. Here's a mobile in Homestead. Hello. Hey, Neil. What's up? How you doing, sir? I'm, I'm glad to hear you all received your bonus after five years. Mm -hmm. Bitching and moaning. Yeah. Well, listen. Man, the reason I don't call me, like, right now. Right now, I'm contest. <laughs> the reason I don't call, right, you know, the I call my mobile, right? You know, I'm paying because I, I have both out. I can't use that pound 560 or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you put me on hold, and then, you know, you take three calls, and, you you know, you go com for commercial. I mean, you know, I stay on hold. I'll call back once in a while, but, mm -hmm. you know, more yeah, I, I know this format. I've been talking about that. It's impossible. We've got what amounts to four newscast breaks an hour. And these people, uh, you tell them about it, and they say, oh, yeah, well, uh, we'll think about it. And they scratch their head, and they uh, walk away from you. I mean, you got a good show and everything. You know, it's just that, you know, you wonder why people sometimes don't call, you know. Well, the whole, I mean, the whole station is developing that syndrome more and more because it's all spots radio, and, and most people who have any semblance of a life, they're not going to wait for, like, uh, 55 hours to get on and talk for two minutes. Yeah, I just want to know it's not you. You know, it's just that, you know, we can't hold on forever, especially me that I'm paying, the, you know, the call. Right. Okay, pal. Good show. Thanks for the memories. Later. Yeah, he's right. See, even, even the listeners know about the format. They know it sucks. Even the listeners understand that. And by the way, Gregory, the reason Norma Kent didn't call you about that uh, adjustment on my pay for the second year is because he was calling you about all the other things which uh, you don't respond to. But, uh, you know, oh, Norm didn't even call me. In fact, he probably didn't expect a return call is why he didn't call you. We have an open line at date, 567056 line. Here's Fort Myers. Hello. Yes. About 48 hours. I watched that program last night. And what did you think of it? Well, whenever I watch those kind of programs, I think we have too many policemen, too many prosecutors, and too many lawyers. If, too many too many stupid laws, too. Exactly. If if they were going to uh, uphold these laws in the school I graduated from, my whole class would have been in jail. Right. It's just it's totally ridiculous. They really ridiculous. been doing hard time. And, and I'm watching these girls, Neil, and somehow I, I just think that they were advertising, they wanted it, they're looking cutesy, and they're looking for hot guys. And, and, and they kept coming back again. That's what I don't understand. I mean, if you're going to be raped and if somebody's going to booze you up and take advantage of you, what do you come back for and what do you tell your girlfriends, let's go there and get laid? I mean, what is that all about? And then, and then uh, you know, cry rape. Exactly. And, I, well, like I say, I just think we've got too many cops, too many lawyers, too many state's attorneys. They got nothing else to do. But didn't you? Th but didn't you think that that one kid, the uh, kind of ringleader, the one that was the main focus of the story, wasn't he kind of a wise guy? Oh yeah, he was a real wise guy. Well, you know, he's the one that got he, more time than anybody else. He's quoting uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Oh and yeah, he's, uh, all this other bull crap. That was great. That was just wonderful. <laughs> I record your programs in Cinema Mind in Columbus, Ohio. She loves you. All right. You are God. I'm big in Columbus. You bet. All right. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you, sir. All right, thank God we got a guy that saw the 48 Hours piece last night oh! and actually had something to say about it. That made sense. Thank God for you, sir. We have an open line of day. I understand there's too, too much fragmentation. There were too many different things. We had the star thing went on forever last night. And uh, David Kendall, who I thought did a really piss-poor job, by the way. He got him a little bit foaming at the mouth there for a couple of seconds. But other than that, he, he didn't say a goddamn thing. And then when it started getting really out of control there at the end, then they shut the cameras off. Did you see any of that? When he uh, started talking about subpoenaing these other witnesses on the uh, some kind of a subpoena or some kind of a peony. And Barney Frank started flitting around. I thought he was going to take off into orbit. He was flipping his, uh, like, flipper like this. And it was great. And then right at that point, they cut the cameras off. Because at that point, we saw that Henry Hyde is just a partisan, just like all the rest of them, the Democrats, the Republicans, every single one of them. I mean, all the Republicans yesterday, their five minutes consisted of, oh, Mr. Starr, we thank you so much for being here today, and you never stole a freight train, and we know you're a great American, and you're a wonderful, uh, you were a great judge, and blah, 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 and we love you. And the Democrats all were going on about, hey, you're full of crap, and, uh, you know, you hate the president, et cetera, and so on. What an incredible waste of 12 hours. Ten minutes past eleven at five sixty WQAM. Bird. 
right where you got it. Sports Radio 560 QAM. A planet where apes evolved from men. CWQM, so let me ask you this. Some uh, big, uh, angry, um, hostile guy, regardless of whether he's black, white, or uh, Arab, or whatever he might be, uh, comes at you, uh, who's already threatened you, by the way, and intimidated you, and comes at you with a, with a bottle. Bottle of what? No, like with a, with a bottle, like, uh, you know, breaking off a bottle and like maybe I'd be going to kill you, stuff like that. And you just are absolutely terrified for your life and you pick up your piece and you start shooting and just uh, automatically just keep shooting until uh, he's dead as a doornail. Sure, maybe kick him, kick him a couple times, too. Yeah. And this guy got uh, convicted, second degree murder. And the uh, Arabs are invading our uh, community. Okay, we have an open line in Broward, 5670560 and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in uh, Miramar. Hello. Mobile in Miramar. Going once. Long gone. Okay, here's uh, Kendall. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, did you see Bono on that uh, inquiry yesterday? Is she a bonehead or what? She's a total Bono head, yeah. Oh, I just like you so much. Mm -hmm. It's so nice of you. You've done such a good job. I thought she was going to do him right there. I thought she was going to crawl under the uh, table and do him right there. Oh, and he looks so happy, smiling. Looks like howdy duty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yeah, my family's fine, and thank you for Okay, the... thank you. Okay, we have an open line at day one in Broward. Five, six, line. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil God. Yes, sir. Love your show. Uh-huh. Hey, I agree with you total about Channel 10 News. Diane Magnum and uh, Dwight, what's his name, douchebag. <laughs> they are total losers. Dwight I mean, douchebag, I used, like, yeah. I grew up with Channel 10, and I loved their news back in the days when, uh, who was it, Art Carlson and, uh, and, uh, and Bull Dyke, yeah. Bull Dyke. <laughs> right. And I moved away, and, and I moved back, like, I moved away. Remember Jim Brosmer? Brosmer back. started out in 10. He got screwed over, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know. I think, uh, Channel 7 sort of, like, totally influenced them to the point where they just, they, they have no regard for, or no shame, I should say, for, how they plug their up-and-coming news, their, their little uh, promos or plugs throughout the day. I remember about three years ago, there was an instance where Diane Magnum comes on like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon and says, this little promo, plane slams into the tank light. So, you know, this is big news, right? Obviously, a plane slamming into the turnpike. And I watch the news at 5 o'clock, and it's one of these little pipe airplanes that yeah. has a little problem. It was a model plane, I think, that some kids threw out the window of a car. It was yeah. perfectly smooth, no, no accidents, nobody hurt, nothing. But she, well, I got a real good idea of uh, their journalistic credibility last night. And again, maybe it, it, it's just a small point, but I mean, why, why would you interview somebody or uh, people and go to their home and then make things up and twist and manipulate and uh, turn things around. Well, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? They think for ratings. They just don't care what they say. But, but I, why I would... think they're in total competition with Channel 7. Okay. That's all have, they care have a great day, pal. They suck. I mean, it's not, not going to affect the ratings because people aren't going to suddenly get an inspiration and discover, oh my God, they're talking about, you know, whatever, fill in the blank, because uh, you're either watching it or you're not. But if you're going to do an interview with somebody, why not do it accurately? What, what, what is the point? So, like I said, I thought she was a real nice person, but uh, who knows? I mean, when well, you sit down with somebody for half an hour, and they put on a nice face, and et cetera, and so on. Maybe that was the best she could do. Maybe that's uh, her idea of journalism. Maybe that was the best piece they could put together. Because, quite frankly, it sucked. Here's a call from Greensboro, North Carolina. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Hey, I enjoyed hearing you in person a few weeks ago when I was down there in Miami, and now I've got you on the web. All right. I want to talk about the star hearings. Yeah. You know, I'm a libertarian, and um, I, I'm absolutely... The, the Democrats are the ones that disgust me, you know, because... And why is that, sir? I'll tell you why, because the idea... I mean, I'm in, I just really have a problem with control freaks. And so here we've got, you know, sort of the religious right, which I have a problem with in the Republican Party. But they so pale in comparison with the actual control they want to have over your life and the hypocrisy they're having while doing it. Let me give you an example. We're, we're talking about someone who's more responsible for making it harder to say hello and wave at someone at work. Maybe a little wink and a nod to go along with it. What, what does that have to do with a star hearing? Well, the reason is, is because, look, 
you can see right away from the star hearings when you look at Maxine Waters, chief racist on the uh, star hearings. She's a racist. Oh, absolutely. Um, she's also come on. The Democrats distance herself, distance her, distance themselves from her. She's she's in league with Calypso Louie, who refers to us as Blue Eyed Devil. Yeah. And the Democrats distance themselves from her. And all these people, you know, Republicans are just dressed by their mommies. They're just wussies. They don't really okay, believe. Well, listen, you and your Libertarian Party. Good luck to you up there in Greensboro, pal. Oh, my God. See why I stopped talking that crap about 200 years ago? <coughs> what a bunch of uh, convoluted garbage. We have an open line in day. Nothing he had to say had anything to do with the uh, star hearings. The fact that Maxine Waters is sitting there on the uh, committee. I love that it's stuff that I must call that I was telling <coughs> you about. Yeah. Lines like that. All these little one-liners. Uh -huh. One-liners. While I must have his head in his chest. Pathetic. Oh, well, he had his head on his chest. But usually he's got it, like, down on the counter. Open line in the Broward, up to look at the pictures of his uh, wife and his little baby. Five times. And the thing of it is, I like Imus. I mean, personally, I, he was a great talent years ago, so it's not that I don't like him. It's just that that show is unbelievable. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Nim. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Okay. Um, Nim, I saw you yesterday in the um, 11 o'clock news. Uh-huh. And um, a couple of things that you said I really didn't like, you know. I mean, you and what was that? Well, constantly you say that on the radio. You know, 95% of the calls you get there from morons. No, I said 90%. But I, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm off by 5%. The most important thing is that, um, you know, you said you hate this place and you wish that you were going to be going back I, I to Italy in six I months didn't say from I there. I hated the place. I didn't say that. Well, you were not really happy with South Florida, the way you? Did I say that I hated it? Well, you say that you, you will not ever come back to this place. I, did I, did I say that? I didn't say that either. I didn't say I would never come back. In fact, I'm buying my mother's condominium from... Uh, That's your mother. How about you, Neil? No, you no, I'm you buying... Spend six months again, in Italy my mother is... Do you want to have them? a conversation, sir, or not? Yes, I will definitely do that. Then how come you don't let me finish my sentence? By all means, finish. Let me say it again. I bought my mother's condominium in Hollywood, so number one, she can live rent-free, and number two, that when she uh, meets the big maker in the sky, that eventually uh, I'll come back uh, part of the year here. And I'll live there. But that's not what you said. You said you hated this place. No, well, I, no I did not say that. I never said I hated it, and I never said I was never coming back. I never said either one of those things. Neil, don't forget what you're making your money, which is in South Florida. Sir, let me tell you something. I'm making a lot of money here, which is the main reason that I am here. That's right. But if you want me to lie and tell you that I love what the community this is, and like the, like the latest thing with the phony petitions that Maria, Maria that Xavier Suarez is uh, phoning up again to try to get back into phoning his way back at all. I know. We're not talking about these banana republic government. I'm talking so, about... So then what, so then what are we talking about? Well, it's not only itself, people here. What about it? Well, I don't think they're that terrible like you say they are. Well, that's your opinion. Of course. Okay, I would really like to answer that. And where do you go? Uh, I will stay here. No, no, where, where do you travel? Where do I go? Why? Yeah, well, on vacation, uh, like, uh, where do you go? Well, usually Italy. Italy? Uh-huh. And you like it better here than Italy? Well, I didn't say that. My wife is from Italy, so I go there all the time. You well, know, well, well, I kind of which, like it which, there. which do you like better, Italy or South Florida? Absolutely, South Florida. Where in Italy? Uh, in Napoli. Oh, I, oh, okay, thank you. Okay, there we go. Naples, where all the schleppers are. Try going to a place where they have people with an income of more than $10 a year. More than 40,000 lira would be good. <clears throat> We have an open line in date. I mean, he's entitled to his opinion, but don't start making an attack on me because I'm being honest about the way I feel about it. And don't give me the song and the dance like I'm stealing money out of here, like I give nothing back to the community. How much money are you raising for charity this year, sir? Community. What have you done to try to improve or expose what the hell's going on here? That I've been uh, banging my head against the brick wall for 22 and a half years, and it's still going on. Well, let's banana republic. But I mean, but, well, maybe some of us don't want to live in a goddamn banana republic. How do you like that, sir? Oh! Excuse me. We want to live in a country like where the government is stable, like Italy, where it only changes every two or three weeks. You want the fastest DQAM? Oh, is that it? Was that a day a fake uh, fake Q? Okay, eleven forty-five. Well, what the hell do I know? I, that's uh, is that something new there or what? Is that new? Uh huh. Okay. Well, they want to keep you on your toes. Anyway, Greg Reed just brought me a big, big check here. Did you see how much this amount was for? Yes. Wow, not bad. More than you make in... Um, just, well, not quite. I was going to say more than you make in a month. Here's, uh, in six months, here's Boca. Hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, star last night. 
uh, he was still going on about 10, 11 o'clock, right? Yeah, he was on uh, almost to 11, right? Yes, he said he was starting to lose it there at the end. Kendall, Kendall had him going. I no, think... he didn't. David Kendall was, I thought, very weak. He didn't say a goddamn thing. Well, they wouldn't let him talk. I mean, they only had a few minutes. What do you mean they wouldn't let him talk? He had 30 minutes, and they gave him another 30 minutes, and he still didn't say anything. He was weak. How about uh, Maxine Waters and Franks? Yeah. Well, if they give them a little more time to work into him, I think he would have come un unglued there. Yeah. Yeah, they would have got under his skin, but they didn't. I, I got news for you. There was 12 hours, and by the time it was all over, they asked all these experts they bring on, did we learn anything new today? And they all said, no. Absolutely nothing. No, and they kept saying, well, they didn't ask any questions on the facts. They just attacked Star. Well, if they wanted the facts, you have to bring in the witness look, look, to question like, like them Sam directly. Da look, like Sam Dash said, he had no business being there testifying. He gave them the report. All these, they, we've got 50,000 different books with all this information. Right. It. It's been on the Internet. Violated. It's been in every newspaper, every magazine. Uh, you know, that was supposed to be their job, to read the referral, to right. decide whether there were impeachable offenses to proceed with. And instead of that, they put on this dog and pony show with him for 12 hours yesterday, and they still haven't got anything. Uh, I don't think they're going to take a vote on it. Do you? You're asking me? Well, I mean, uh, uh, the, the, depends the, how much more money Richard Mellon Scaffe and the right wing keep going in. I don't know. You could see these other Republicans are bailing out on, on the deal, a little by little. They, they're losing support. And by the way, speaking of Howdy Doody, have you ever seen Bill McCollum from Florida? Oh Howdy Doody man, together? what okay, a howdy! Oh, the worst. Okay, have a great life. <laughs> In fact, uh, he kind of looked like a, a cross between Howdy Doody and Mr. Bluster yesterday. Let's bring back Buffalo Bob. Oh. Oh, he's dead. Bring him back anyway. Let's play that Good Times music again. We have an open line at Broward, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. For that guy that called before that was chastising me and giving me a song and a dance, I got a nice big fat check in my pocket, which I didn't even realize I had this money coming, okay? I mean, so eventually I would have realized that we would have had a big song and a dance. But for once, they actually, uh, in fact, you better write this down. On the same day that George got his bonus, I got a pay increase retroactive to October 1st that I forgot I even had coming. How do you like that? Oh! Are they coming along here or what? No. No, same bullcrap. What are you laughing about? They're not, they're not coming along at all. It took you about, what, 10 years to get that money? How would you like to have the interest in the bank and all the money that these people don't pay anybody? Open line. By the way, is there interest on here, Greg, on this? Uh, no. Here's a mobile, oh, in Naples, uh, Florida, or Italy. Hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, this is Bob in Naples. Yes, Bob. Florida, that is. Listen, I wanted to thank you for turning me on to the pizza loft. Um, I went over to the Breeders' Cup to Calder um, a couple weekends ago. Right. And uh, I met Jeff, wonderful guy. Uh, He's interesting. Greatest food I've ever had, as yeah. far as Italian concern. Um, also, on the way out, this is how nice the guy is, uh, me and my buddy were talking to him, and I said, where can I get tickets to the Dolphins game instead of going down to the you know, local mobile station and dealing with those idiots? He says, just a minute. He goes, <clears throat> excuse me, he goes in his kitchen and pulls out two tickets. Are you serious? Yeah, it was oh terrific. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. Just terrific. What a good guy. But anyway, I love your show, and I uh, just want to let you know that, and he's a good guy, and thanks for letting me know about that place. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Take it easy. Okay. And uh, Jeff must have probably slipped a 20 in there, too, with the Dolphin tickets to inspire that call. He's okay in our book, that Jeff Cohen. Oh! Never met a vibrator he didn't like. We have an open line in Dade County, 5670. I was thinking about eating today, George, having a little uh, celebration here, but I'm not going to do it. I shouldn't do it, should I? Well, I'm starving. Are you starving? Like I said, we're probably going to be eating here shortly. Well, George isn't going to be here next week. He'll be on vacation. Now, you're not going anywhere, are you? <laughs> no. I still have the house to work on. And I was going to go to North Carolina, but I'm going to And George, by the way, five. not only gave me that great exercise bike for my birthday, but yesterday afternoon came over and worked feverishly for about 10 minutes and uh, put that thing together. No, seriously, that's a, that's a great thing. Did you try it out at all? I tried it out for about five seconds, and I made sure that all the uh, meters worked and all that. That's great. Well, no, I will be using it because it's right there in front of the TV in my room, which has the cable in there. The TV in the other room with the treadmill, and it's got the little rabbit ears. I don't have cable in there. Is that the same bedroom that you share with your companion? With my dogs, yes. One of the closest creatures in the world to me is my golden retriever because he's, like, better than a person. No, seriously, I consider him one of my very best friends in the world. The little dog, uh, you know, he's crap. But, uh... 
What? I'm just telling you. Feeling it? Am I supposed to say, "Oh, there's nothing like a cuddly little dog"? Like they showed me last night, I was holding that little piece of crap in my arm. The only reason I was holding him is because if I let him uh, down on the floor, he's going to be running around, knocking everybody over, uh, screaming and carrying on, and barking up a storm. That's the only reason I was holding him. And then after they walked out, I said, "Hey, I, I walk him right in that kitchen. I open up the door in the microwave. I said, "Hey, Tiny, take a look in there, huh? Perfect fit." And he quiets down. He dummies up in a hurry. See, a little dog is like, uh, you feel sorry for it. It's not like a friend or a companion. A little dog, you feel sorry. It's pathetic. It's got a brain the size of a ball bearing. It's kind of like Greg Reed, you know. But a big dog is like a person. It's got a personality. Uh, you can talk to him. It's amazing. So, you know, you have one dog that's a piece of crap and another dog that's like a good friend. How do you like that, Diane? Maybe we should have had a little longer conversation for you, okay? In fact, I should have been sitting on the couch with a golden retriever there, and I could have said, Neil's companion, under the, the caption. That, that would have been good. Oh! There you go, Diane. I just, I guess I didn't draw her a good enough diagram. Here's a mobile in Kendall. Hello. Yes, Neil. Yes, Hi. sir. Neil, uh, this morning I watched the Today Show, and I was absolutely sickened by the way that Matt, Katie, and Tim Russell deified this guy's star. Really? Yeah, I mean, you know, what Starr has done to our civil rights and to the law in this country is worse than 10,000 served fish. Well, you ought, feel, you ought to feel a lot better knowing that Sam Dash walked out and issued a scathing indictment of what Ken Starr did with testifying yesterday. And uh, Sam Dash, like I said, one of the most respected lawyers in the whole country and a real uh, Watergate veteran. This guy told him to stick it where the moon don't shine. He's an expert. Listen, Neil, there yeah. are two reading references that I'd like to give you. Yes? One is the April 98 issue of Esquire, where there's an article called Dear Mr. President Oops by David Brock. And David Brock was the guy who... Yeah, I already read that. I've seen that. Yes, and moving right along. And then the second one is entitled And the Horse He Rode In On by yeah. James Carville. Right. Have you come across that? Yes, I already read that. Thank you very much. Okay, we have an open line, and uh, how's Mary Magdalene doing, by the way? Open line, TNT line. I got a great thing here that somebody faxed me I'll get into before the show ends today, if we ever have time. Children in the U.S. justice system, which ties in a little bit with uh, what went on last night on 48 Hours piece, which I guess uh, that other guy that called him, yours truly, we're the only ones that saw it. Well, how, why would anybody be watching that when they could be watching, uh, you know, the 11th and 12th hours of Ken Starr? And the end of the uh, hockey game. I was, you know, I have this tremendous ability, which drives everybody else nuts, to watch about three, four things at the same time. And very rarely miss anything important. I can be watching like three different hockey games or football games simultaneously. And I'm flipping back and forth. And I just have this great ability to time it so that either all of them have commercials on at the same time, which is usually the case since there are no more games. It's just nonstop spots. Or I turn on just when there's a goal being scored. Just tremendous. Like the, when the Panthers tied it up, I had just turned it back on. It's 5-4, to four, and within 15 seconds, but a beat, here's Whitney with that big shot. Here's the rebound. They're all around the front of the net. Next thing you know, Sphalo sticks it in, and the game is tied 5-5. Five, five. Oh! But at any rate, I'll uh, get into this a little bit later on, because uh, Amnesty International, as you know, discovered that this country got some real, real problems when it comes to violations of human rights. I know that we're not supposed to believe those things. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey, Neil. God, what's up? How you doing, sir? Yeah, I saw the piece on Channel 10. Yeah. That's right. And even though it was a fluff piece, it was glad to, I was glad to see you relaxed and candid and hanging out. It was, you know, better than the usual forum where you're foaming at the mouth and so forth. Uh -huh. No, but I enjoyed it. It was good. And uh, I thought it well, sucked. Yeah, well, I mean, it sucked. I understand what you're saying. They didn't get into you, you know, humanitarian, blah, blah, no, no, blah. No, not just about that. I'm not looking for a brownie points, but right. I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to say anything, number one. No, and number two, there was no promotion of what station I'm on, what time I'm on, what I've done here, how many, and nothing, you know, it's just, uh, I'm the most listened to and they hate me or they love me or whatever, and that was it. Yeah, you know, well, it's Channel 10, you can't expect too much. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, listen, also, I'm, I've got a Labrador also, and it's a, a great dog, you know, it's just like having another person in the house, it's, right. you know, personality, fantastic. That doesn't talk back. No, absolutely, and great, and, and unconditional love, too. Right. You know, and uh, also, I want to put my vote in for this place blows, South Florida, is a bunch of posers and assholes, Yeah. <laughs> all right? Yeah. Uh, to be quite honest with you, and when I get the uh, financial means to go somewhere else, believe me, I will. Okay. And one more thing. Uh, not all Republicans are a bunch of born-again asshole psycho douchebags, okay? Okay. All right. I'll tell Barney uh, Fag you said that. 
We have two open lines in Broward, five minutes, 11.50. At the Boogs, they're at six. And we got Ed Kaplan live from the Bahamas. Boy, he'll be plunging his brains out over there. 10 o'clock to 60. QAM. The Neil Rogers Show. Lauderdale. Neil. By the way, did we mention that the Arabs are uh, invading our neighborhoods? Uh -huh. 12 o'clock at 560 WQM. We have two open lines in uh, Broward line. So a couple of weeks ago, I had what I thought was the most incredible statement in the history of uh, sports by Terry Murray when he talked about the fact they didn't pull the goalie at the end and they could have had a two-man advantage and played uh, you know, six on uh, four, whatever the hell it was. And he said, well, we practiced the power play. You remember that comment. And I said, in fact, I even saved it. It's up on the wall on the uh, bulletin board. But he's even uh, done himself better than that. Defoe was in here before and reminded me about this. Thank you, Defoe. Wasn't he playing goalie for uh, Boston last night? Anyway, after the Panthers made the big comeback last night and tied the game 5-5, this has to be a big morale boost, defenseman Paul Law said. Anytime you come back from a four-goal goal deficit, it has to give you confidence. It has to be something we can carry. Law is known for his responsible defense and willingness to drop the gloves at any time, assisted on goals by Scott Mellonby and Mark Parrish, 57 seconds apart in the third period. Robert Svela scored the tying goal with 10-11 left in regulation. Murray, this is Terry Murray, okay? Panthers coach Terry Murray. Strap yourselves in, boys and girls. Compared Laws, the game's first star, to Bruins Hall of Famer Bobby Orr. <laughs> if he was wearing number four on his back tonight, he could have fit right in here with the legend, <laughs> said Terry Murray. Oh, has this guy got a sense of humor uh -huh. or what? Unbelievable. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Paul Laws, but every time I see him, I think, boy, there's, he looks just like Bobby Orr out there. He just, uh, every every move he makes, he reminds me of number four, Bobby Orr. Right? No. Here's a mobile in uh, Homestead. Hello. Mobile in Homestead. Oh, hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, with the response you've been getting at the sporting events and stuff, has it ever crossed your mind to run for governor? Meaning what? To run for governor here in Florida. For what point? Based on what? Based on well, what qualification? Because, like, you were, you were on 48 hours and you didn't get to, to talk all you want. I, mean, I, was on, I was on 48 hours? I mean, the Channel 10 yesterday, the program. I was on 48 hours? No, no, no. I made, I made a mistake. Okay. Yeah, you made the call. That was the mistake. Two open lines in Broward, 567. And that guy's chastising me before what I said about 90%. I think it was being pretty damn generous. I think I was underestimating uh -huh. I mean, what, what is this guy talking about? Does anybody have any idea? No. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. Oh, I'll talk to Neil. You guys go. Hey, Tom. Yeah, you guys go. Mm -hmm. Hey, Neil. How you doing, guys? Okay, sir. Yeah, that's good, man. Yeah, 48 hours? I didn't see you there. I was on 48 hours. It was, yeah, and you look great on it, okay? Uh-huh. I never looked so young in my life. In fact, I'm going to be doing my four and a half months starting after this show. <laughs> God, you all got money. George has money. I congratulated him when he picked up the phone. Oh, yeah, finally, only, only took us about 10 years to get hey. the money out of these cheap bastards. The point is you got it, okay? Uh-huh. Listen, we were working yesterday, last night, um, we, tr we trade currencies, and when uh, old Sam came on and resigned, you know, the dollar really shot. I mean, it tells you that they're done with this impeachment crap. Mm -hmm. And we, we turned you to see on Channel 10, but, Neil, we really missed that home, Okay. The home job that you used to get, you know, on oh, Whammy? No, you should have watched Whammy first. You would have gotten a free home yeah, job Yeah, but you didn't Whammy. get the home job. Man. Yeah. We, we forgot, you know. Uh, we went well, to you get, see, it's, a, it's a written in the law. You can't have the cap with the, with the uh, pot. You can't have the uh, weed on there and the hum at the same time. <laughs> the weed yeah. was good. One the or hat, the other. The hat was cool. I couldn't well, see Well, how do you like that? Whammy, uh, Matty, Why did they not put there? that on? I don't understand. Because he decided that uh, it was uh, unacceptable for television standards on Whammy. And then they put it on Channel 10. Yeah. Like, Channel 10 doesn't have a bigger market than Whammy. Of course, uh, Channel 10's got more people watching in five seconds than all the people uh, that watch Whammy since it's been I on here in June. Listen, I went to Borders, uh, picked up the uh, best of Neil. Thank you. Yeah, well, I had some problems there, giving them money and getting receipts and yada yada on all that crap. Yeah. Got to, I read the uh, Dark Side of Camelot and just finished the Lost Rights, some, some good books there. You got some, some good reading material, you know. Mm -hmm. And in closing, Neil, how could you forget your money? How can I want? Forget your money. Your, your money that you had coming. How can yeah, you very it? easily. They keep that, you occupied with so many other damn problems. So it's not all timers. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Huh? It's not all timers. We don't have to worry about that? Not yet. All right, guys. Love Next you. Week. Take care. Okay, see we have an open line of date, 5670560, oh, pound 560 on a mobile one line between this Gruen, our sales manager, and all the other things and all the lies and the stories and the bull crap they feed you here. They keep you so off balance that maybe that's part of the uh, tactic, you know. 
And then instead of dealing with the other problems, they come in, oh, hey, see this? We found this on our own. Here's the money. We owe you didn't even realize it. See what great guys we are? And I just go, <laughs> oh, yeah, give me the check. Thank you. Here's South Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil, I don't know about you, but I can't uh, stand that black mole on uh, Ten Stars Temple. It's just... It's just become a disgusting... Mac is the brown one above my uh, right eyebrow. Well, yeah, lovely. but that, that, he's got, you know, his is, his is definitely cancer. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's like, I think the whole world is focusing on it, but they're afraid to admit it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm glad that it's, 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 it's a tumor. We have an open line in Dade, 569. Mobile implantation, hello. Yeah, how you doing, Mr. Rogers? Okay, sir. Yes, I just wanted to go ahead and... I'm not kissing your butt, but I watched the interview last night. Yeah. And I would just like to say that uh, I am really impressed that uh, everybody got to see the other side of Neil Rogers. Okay? They did? And also, hello? Yeah. Okay, because I'm breaking up a little bit on the phone. And uh, it was just real refreshing to see the other side because people, you know, most people uh, look at you to be abrasive, you know, and they don't see the other side to you. Mm -hmm. Also, I am a heterosexual, okay, but I also think that it was important and it meant a lot that you did close your so and I have a lot of respect. It was important that I did what? Close your special preference, and that I have a lot of admiration. My my uh, special preference. Okay, get a new phone, pal. We've had an epidemic the last three days. Every on ninety percent of the cell phones, by the time they get about uh, right to the meat of the matter, where you're hoping you can understand whatever the hell they're saying, at that point the phones just start garbling, and uh, that's it. Probably a goddamn communist plot, uh -huh. is what it is. Maybe your Castro got that woodpecker fired up again. Look at that. Should Congress, uh, should they, uh, should your representative impeach only 31% down from 35 and the overwhelming majority of the American public says, no. get this crap over with already, CNN says, in their latest poll. They're polling it. Here's a mobile in Sunrise. Hello. Hey, Neil, what's going on? How you doing, sir? Okay, listen, I'm sick and tired of hearing everybody complain about South Florida and how the people are nasty and this and that. You know, if they don't like it, today, they can move up north and just get the hell out of here. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. This so is a beautiful another... place. We got the best weather. It's uh, beautiful people, multicultural. This is dynamite. It's living in paradise. Oh, it is? Of course. This is paradise? They're paying, it takes you, for instance. They're paying you five million a year. Oh, are they? I, I thought it was twenty million. This is paradise. Yeah. Okay. You start, see, see what I'm saying? Like I said, ninety-eight percent morons. Okay. Ninety percent was a, a gross underestimate on my part, and I apologize profusely. And of course, this guy, you know, uh, ignorance is bliss, like the old saying goes. When you're as dumb as this guy is, he thinks he's in paradise. He's probably got a paradise hanging from his uh, rearview mirror. We have an open line in Dade, one in line. Like I said, tell me where I'm wrong. Don't give me a big song and a dance like you work for the Chamber of Commerce. Tell me where I'm wrong. What I've said over these last many, many years, including back the first month I was on the air in March of 1976 on KAT. And the guy asked me, well, you know, now that you're here in Miami, Neil, what do you think about the sophistication level of our community? And I said, you can't complain about it because there isn't any. Sophistication level of our, of our world-class city. This guy really believes that this is paradise. Probably does a lot of scuba diving. Nine minutes afternoon, 60 QAM. Florida sucks. Howdy! Hi, I'm Spike. And you know, when I'm driving down Route 9W on a hot summer day, me and the missus always stop at Dickens. Dickens Fruit Stand. They've got everything from fruit to vegetables, homemade pies, but there is nothing like that right, honey. Uh huh. Dick Insider. Yes, sir. Why, even though we were late for church last Sunday, she had to have a little Dick Insider. Uh huh. She says there ain't nothing like it. Even my minister says his wife enjoys a little Dick Insider now and then. Hey, why don't you bring some home in our protective plastic grip bottle? That way it'll stay fresh. Or you can let it sit a while and have some hard Dick Insider. Uh -huh. It's good at lunch, good at dinner, and there's nothing like waking up with a Dick Insider. Dickens Fruit Stain, just off Route 9W and Country Road 69. Open 24 hours, because after a chilly summer night, I like to snuggle up in bed with a hot Dick Insider. Mmm. Mm. 1214 at 560 WQM. Speaking of that, getting back to that 48 hours piece last night. Peace. How many of you guys out there, like when you were 17, 18 years old, were doing uh, girls that were like 15, 16? 
You think that there might be just maybe one or two people in this audience, uh -huh. one or two million people listening right now uh -huh. who are doing stuff like that? Maybe when they were like uh, 17, we're doing girls that were like 14 and 15. You think that ever goes on? No. no. We know that it doesn't go on. Because if we put all the young people, all the teenagers in jail who are doing hanky-panky with uh, girls younger than they are, then them, uh, those cells would just be crowded and we'd have to be building a new prison on every street corner. What are you doing? Okay, sir. Hey, yeah. I saw that thing on Channel 10 last night. We were actually waiting all week to see it because they kept promoting it. But yeah. um, I agree with you. When, I, when it was over, I looked at my wife and I said, what was the whole purpose of that? It, right. didn't, really say, it didn't say anything. I don't know if these people are calling me saying, oh, it was great. They're telling you a different life. But it's no, like, they're, they're just sucking around these, uh, these butt fuckers. It was one of the worst things I've ever been involved with in my life. I mean, they, they, well, they, I, I had a chance to say absolutely nothing. They didn't right. promote what station I'm on, what time I'm on, what is that I do. I mean, uh, just nothing. You know, I got two dogs and my uh, companion or whatever he's supposed to be, and, uh, and that was it. And then the back yeah. of my bald spot is the track for five seconds, and that was their idea of a, a piece. I'm what a nice guy. Uh, now, listen, on that other, I also watched that 48 Hours thing. I, I, I didn't get, I was out of my car for a while, so I didn't really get to hear your take on it. But I don't know. I mean, I guess you sort of, I, I agree with your saying uh, in some respect, but I was kind of torn. I mean, I didn't really think uh, any of the kids, any of those guys actually raped the girls, but... So, I don't know, when you, when you think about it, if these guys were so popular and good-looking in their school, couldn't they just go, couldn't they go after 16, I mean, since uh, since the law, the age of consent is that you have to be over, uh, over uh, 14 so, or whatever. So, no, no, let me ask you this, seriously. Are you suggesting to me that kids in high school ask for ID before they hop in the sack with no, somebody? No, no, these guys, you know, these guys were seniors, and they obviously were going after... To, um, freshman girls. These are fresh, fourteen-year-old freshmen. This is they, they, were just, they weren't just going after freshmen. These just happened to be some of the girls that they were banging. That's all. They just happened right. to be. In addition to which, let me say it again. They were coming back to their homes. They were coming back. The third girl, if you saw that part of the story, the third girl uh, asked to be brought there so she could have sex with one or more of them. Right, right. I, I don't. I mean, I don't think they should have been sent to. I don't think they should be sent to prison for it. It's not like a sense like that. But still, I think these. I, I don't know. I have girls. I don't. If I had sons, I think I would tell them, look, I, w I would say, look, you, you know, go go out with girls over 16. You know, you're, you know, you, you, think, you know, obviously they're going to go out with girls. Gonna have let me ask you. Let girls. me ask you this: Are there girls, yeah. including some of the ones on this story last night, are there girls 15 who look about 18 or 19? That's true. That's who are true. very well <laughs> developed and very mature and have big, firm uh, breasts? It, it's it's hard, really, Neil. I mean, it's a hard situation. But I feel. I mean, I also feel for these girls. It I, is hard. I I can picture my own daughter going into high school as a freshman, and yeah. so, you know they're they're so naive. And these kids, these guys are a lot more. I got the answer for you, pal. I got the yeah. answer. Chastity oh. belt. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. All right, thanks. You'll man. need it. Okay, two open lines in Brian. Here's uh, North Miami Beach. Hello. Yes, Neil. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for taking my call. Uh huh. That's a uh, first time caller and a uh, long time listener. For the loyal uh, president. And I do believe that uh, they did a very good job, and especially David Kandel when he uh, set up uh, Star when he told him that he tried to wire the president. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you recognize that. I, I saw the whole thing. I thought he did a very weak job. I thought he was. Uh, well, I, I, I think they can't do mouth. anything. Huh? Well, they can't do anything more than what they did because uh, it's a very big political issue between two parties. And uh, the the strong party has the power in this uh, issue. They uh, they they minimize the time for them. And if you look at Starr, the way he was speaking, he was uh, very comfortable answering the Republican, and uh, his answer was very short. Well, well, the Republicans didn't ask him any questions for the most part. They because just made they little speeches and kissed his ass and said what a wonderful guy he was, and he never stole a freight train, and how nice those glasses were, and which optometrist did he get him from, and uh, et cetera and so on. And they wish they could be just like him when they grow up. One more thing, can I comment? Yes, sir. Uh, do you think the American people will really see that the way we see it? Will they see what? See that that how, uh, they, how they've al they've already seen that. They're tired of it. They don't want no more, Mister. They are they've had it. Well, they want him to pack up his salami sandwich and take his coffee thermos and go back to a Pepperdine or somewhere and uh, get the hell out of our face. Neil, thank you very much for taking my call. And have a great life. And thank you for making your. We have an open line in Broward, 2 and Dade, 567 oh, 560, pound 560 on a mobile one line. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hold on, I'm turn the radio down. Okay. What is it? I'm sorry? What are you doing? I'm turning the radio off. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, two comments. I picked up that book that you recommended, Lost Rights, James yes. Bogart. Right. Incredible. Isn't it? Oh, my God. I had no idea. Well, I had an idea, but now it's just confirming a lot of things that I always suspected. Um, second of all, I did not get to see that chief on you last night. Apparently, I did not Good. Much. Missed absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I was even involved in it. Okay. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Don't forget, noon to two, we'll be at Borders and Kendall tomorrow with our best of Neil stuff for Center One. And uh, we'll have, uh, you know, our DNA, DNH uh, bumper stickers and uh, buttons and whatever else we have to give away because uh, we have to generate all our own giveaways. Because this radio station, do we have any giveaways? No. Do we have any bumper stickers? No. Any buttons? No. Any promotional materials? No. Any promotional budget? No. Any promotional anything here at WQAM? No. So we'll have our own stuff that uh, we'll give out. One open line at Dade, one in Broward, 5670560, pound 560 on a mobile one line. Here's a mobile in North Miami. Hello. Mobile in North Miami. Okay, long gone. They've been on a, all of two minutes and 48 seconds. Well, excuse me. Here's a mobile in uh, Miami. Hello. Mobile in Miami. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Okay. First time caller. How you doing? Great. I just got back from my honeymoon in uh, London and Paris. Yeah. Great time in, uh, in London, man, but Paris is really crappy, man. The people over there got really bad attitudes, man. Uh-huh. Well, that's because they're French. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Uh, listen, uh, any uh, new events coming up that maybe we can attend that I can see you, uh, maybe invite you to a cigar or something? Any new events? Yeah. Like Borders tomorrow and Kendall? All right, sounds great. Noon to two, I'll see you there, maybe. Probably not. We have an open line in uh, Broward, two and day. Well, now's a good time. We're That's uh, kind of tailing off to nothingness now. Now's a good time for me to get into this thing about children in the U.S. justice system. Thousands of, this is from the Internet, thousands of children in the USA accused or convicted of criminal offenses are subjected to human rights abuse. So, you know, that uh, decided they were going to go out and shoot some uh, kids and teachers, etc. I would say in their case, they'd make an exception. We have an open line at Broward 2 and on line 1225 at QAM. A.M. Show me yours, I'll show you mine. I got Look at his head. It's like so big. It looks like one of those alien guys' heads. It's just so round. My name is Puppet, and I like to dance. I got a big head, and I wear short pants. I got a mohawk, and a ring through my nose. I shop in the kids' section for a mic on the hip. Hop, midget, hip, hop, midget, hip, hop, midget, hip, hop, midget. When I meet a girl, I give her my digits, but she never calls. Hip-hop midget. Hip-hop midget. 1230 at 560 WQM. So all you parents out there, that's something for you to think about over the weekend after the 48-hour show last night, which most of you didn't see, unfortunately. So how about if your 15-year-old girl has uh, sex with a 15-year-old boy? Is that any better or worse than if she had sex with a 17-year-old boy? Huh? Something you're going to have to be thinking about very soon, George, in not too many years. She, uh, she knows all about the protection thing. That's all I worry about. Oh, okay. We have an open line of day. Five, six. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. Hi, how you doing? Okay. I don't want to get you started and get you upset. Sure but you do. No, I Because otherwise that. you wouldn't say that. Oh, I love you. Yeah. But I, but, I, I, I for but. the first time, I really understood what you were talking about. I haven't seen the show too often on Whammy. And I watched it. I put it on last night. I just started in the dial. Yeah. And... Your modulation's got to be at like 40 decibels, and right. as soon as they go to a commercial, it's, it's like 70. Oh, more than that. Wh why can't they just, why can't they fix it? They can't do it. They either don't want to do it or they can't do it. It's been that way for months. Oh, my God. How, I didn't realize how frustrating if I were I'd be, it makes you crazy, but I, I got to. The, the only reason I haven't demanded that they pull the show is because that would let them out of the deal, and then they would have to continue paying me until the end of next May, which I will take the money, okay? Amen. Amen. I mean, they, you know, they made a contractual deal, and I have a, an attorney who's a real weak sister and who just uh, can't, you know, or can't or won't coerce them into putting a professional product on the air without just saying, oh, well, okay, we'll pull it off the air, and then we just won't pay anymore. That, that's not the way a real agent would work. But unfortunately, I got to be uh, smoking a lot of weed or whatever he's doing, and we just can't get them uh, to, pr to put a professional product on the air there. It, well, it's and, and everywhere I go, I have people tell me that they're watching it, and I have no idea how they watch it because you can't hear the sound. 
<laughs> and when you do crank it up, the hum the hum job on there is so loud that it's it, it's a joke. And then as soon as the, and as soon as they cut away from you, boom, you right. know the house is rocking. That's the right. They can get the level on everything else. The audio is fine, but for some strange reason, they just can't get it right. Well, Must be a coincidence. Well, I have a relative in show business, and that person complains about their management agents as well. So. You know, I, I understand that part of your business also. Yeah, well, see, I have a lawyer who's a good lawyer, but unfortunately he somehow has deluded himself into believing that he's a talent, a broadcast talent agent, which he's not. You know, yeah. he would like to be a baseball agent, a talent agent, and a lot of other things instead of just sticking to his practice of law, which he does very well. And I have that with an accountant right away. I'm representing this player and that player. Right there. There you go. I said, don't tell me this. I want you to be reading the, you know, CPA bulletin. Right. Go into the ballpark. Exactly. Anyway, I love you. Have a great weekend. And back to you. Bye-bye. Okay, we have an open line in days of Rod Kaplan and all the other people that have worked on a show and that we had here for months and months and months. They uh, they either refuse or they're incapable of, and they just uh, can't put on the air product that people can watch and hear at the same time. And like I said, perfect for this town. And I'm still waiting, by the way, other than the guy who sounded like the Chamber of Commerce guy, whatever I have ever said about this town, whatever criticisms I've had, I'm waiting. I'll sit here and listen. Tell me where I'm wrong. Like that guy that's talking to me at China about an hour and a half ago about how I'm too critical and uh, making all of this money here. And he, he didn't like the fact that I said on the Channel 10 interview last night. And, and, and then he puts words in my mouth. I never said I hated it like poison. And I never said I would never come back. I never said either one of those things. So obviously he's got some uh, ass to grind. But if you don't just sit back and tell everybody how wonderful things are, I mean, uh, things could be great here. It could be paradise. We could have casinos here. We could send a lot of the old people back where the hell they came from. We could uh, take the banana boat people and send them to South Dakota or somewhere and, uh, you know, make this a living and breathing place. But the fact is, it's not. And those people who give me a song and a dance about the weather, see, they, they can't, haven't figured out how to screw the weather up yet. They haven't figured out a way to do that yet. But I'm going to ask you this. There are millions of people living in Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, etc. Places where the weather, much of the year, is abominable. Four million people in Toronto, freezing their ass off right now as I speak. Now, if we had the weather of, say, Rochester, New York, here in South Florida, how many people do you think would be living down here now? Oh! That's right, the big O. You have a big swampland. The Everglades would kind of like ooze off to the uh, ocean and it would all like meld together. And you'd have like a, a handful of uh, banana boat people. That would be it. And they could take over the whole goddamn place. Seriously, stop and ask yourself that question. If the weather in South Florida was like the weather in Chicago, like the weather in Buffalo, how many people would be living here? And the weather is a constant. The weather is not something that the residents, the politicians, the newspapers, the media people, we have no control over that. It just is. So it's really not a factor in the discussion about things like that. Here's Davey. Hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. How are you today? Okay. I don't usually watch Channel 10 News at 11, but I did last night because I heard that uh, they're going to do a segment on you. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I, I thought that they'd make you wait till, you know, probably like 11:29 or so until your story came on. But, mm -hmm. you know, they only had to wait like 10 minutes or so. But I definitely came away from it thinking that John was your your close partner. And uh, well, they... that, that's what they said. I mean, uh, which is not true. And like I said, neither one of us care. But, but what's the point of suggesting that or, or making that remark when it when I've already told them that's not true? Well, I don't know. You have to ask the White Lauderdale about that one, I mm -hmm. guess. But uh, you know the. I was expecting to see, like, a real nice house and stuff, and I didn't see anything. I mean, no. I saw, no, I they saw came a room. In and they, they, they came in and they photographed every room in my house, the den, the sports den that I got with all the sports memorabilia, my the bedrooms, the uh, the I, living room, every yeah. part of the house. And, it, and they showed that one picture from an impossible angle there, that bar mitzvah picture that my mother stuck over my bed. And, uh, so and you're, you're kind of a cute little kid, back way back when. But, yeah. I mean, I saw a big screen ago. TV. There was a big screen TV. Right. And, uh, and carrying the little right. dog in my arm and the big dog running around on the floor for about like two a, seconds. I don't know, like a, like a basement from, uh, from up, New, up in New York or something. Right. It's like a dark room. Right. And I was like, this guy needs an interior decorator. And I I'm don't. Sure the I, rest happen of have, I happen to have a pretty damn nice house. But we should uh, we should have got to see that. I wish we did. Yeah. And um, Well, they could learn a lot from John Deucebag on Channel 4. They did a great piece uh, last year. but you know, Channel uh, 10, what do you expect? 
What do you expect on Channel 10? That's why I don't watch it. Crap. I mean, actually, they, they had really bad angles on you also, I thought. You know, when they did close-ups, you know, unfortunately, uh... Didn't they have, like, a makeup person or anything to help I, I, a little bit? I don't do makeup. I don't want any makeup. I don't worry about that. I mean, what you see is what you get. I don't care about that. It looks kind of like, like a little bit. I mean, I, I love you, Neil, but yeah. a little bit like a uh, lightly complexed Dwight Lauderdale, a little bit. Like, oh, I was because I was unshaven. I was, I was glad to see that I had tried. See, I could have shaved again before they showed up. They taped that about 7 o'clock at night one night. And I could have shaved again, and, uh, you know, so he, I love to look a little on the scruffy side. I'll tell you what. Today is, is going to be a sad day. Four years from now, if you do take off, yeah, it'll be a sad day down here. Oh, hey, listen, I can I can tell by this response on the phones here every day that these these people will never be able to survive without me. Well, everybody is is, is an island to themselves down here. Nobody wants to say hello, or you know, you walk down the street, you say hello to somebody, and they look at you like you want to kill right. them. So nobody they get says out the cell anybody. phone and call the nine one one. Right. Just remember, life is beautiful. Okay, pal. We have an open line in Broward. One line. Like you said, these are the friendliest goddamn people on the face of the earth here. That's right. The most polite driver. Near, I nearly got uh, squeezed this morning, boy, on 595. It was geek morning coming to work this morning. And all these people getting off at the university, wherever the hell they were getting, and they got their left blinkers on. And there wasn't a lot of traffic, but they were just having this problem. They just couldn't quite get over. And those of us who were in that right-hand lane were trying desperately to let them in, and they still wouldn't get over so now I have to finally squeeze over like to the edge of the white line there. And then I look and here's this asshole in some kind of a truck who's over in my lane. And I goddamn near hit the son of a bitch. Because he decided he was going to drive in two lanes at the same time. And the idiot to the right of me, he's like, uh, he's half in, he's half out, he's terrified. See, the worst drivers in the world are, besides drunk drivers, the worst drivers are scared drivers. So you take a lot of the old people we have here... And a lot of the women who are out there pretending to be drivers who are terrified. They're squeezing the wheel like they're going to try to get blood out of it. You show me a scared driver and I'll show somebody that I'll show somebody who needs to be on the bus. 21 to 1 at 560. It's Friday, you bastard. Coming next year, the King of Pop benefits for your hometown, touring to benefit the Cardinal Classic School. Wayward Boys, it's Michael Jackson. Jackson. Yes, Michael performs all of his greatest hits from oldies with the Jackson Five. Standing in the ABCs, I'm getting down on my knees, removing the dumb goofies. That's right. From the time of tune to the Jackson 5 to the classic solo work, Michael Jackson's benefit to her aims to please. The people I surround myself with are just in denial. Some call me big brother, some are pedophile. But you know no one to defile. I just sit for a while and beat it, beat it, beat it. I beat it, beat it, beat it. Michael Jackson. Sometimes I'm so depressed that I just sit around so can waiting for a call. And be one of the five lucky boys to receive backstage passes to hang out in Michael Jackson's dressing room. Michael Jackson's benefit. Um, hey, uh, Michael. Yes, Bobby. <laughs> Is that your real skin color? Well, it, it's inside with count. But I know a game that we can play to find out. Let's send to be five. You know, it's time to free Willie. Say, say, say what you want. Rousing finale as Michael sings the song he wrote for the children of the world with the Vienna Boys Choir backing him up. I don't like
tactics. Like Billy's jeans. Do you know how to tell time? And of course, smooth criminal. Yes, it's Michael Jackson's tour to benefit the Cardinal Clancy School for Wayward Boys. Get your tickets now. Boys under 10 admitted free when accompanied by no one. They're white. They're really, really tight. They're black. They're white. They're really, really tight. 1247 at 560 WQM, the Dateline. Dead, they are dormant. What are we going to Kendall for tomorrow, you know, when you come right down to us? Why are we going to Kendall? That's, that's going to be a real uh, eye-opener for me, one way or the other. Because Aventura is just barely in Dade County, just south of the border. And that was uh, pretty touch-and-go there. Ben and Jerry's thing we did. Huh? Pretty weak. George is nodding his head. But that's and just because there's, uh, there's just old Jews in Aventura. I'm telling you, mister, day after day, you sit there and watch this thing. Now, when you were doing the show, did you have a million calls from Dade County? Mm. Oh, seriously? Not a million. Remember, all the lines are forwarded to the Broward line. Why? Because they're I'm going to tell you that something. Way. The day that we get out of this studio... You know, yesterday, Greg Reed, talking about this great Samaritan who brought us some money that we're long overdue here today, whether we knew about it or not, in my case... But he says to George yesterday, oh, when Neil gets off the air, have him go upstairs and take a look at the uh, progress on the studio. Two o'clock comes, we go upstairs, look at the studio, and it's the same crap that it was uh, four or five weeks ago when I looked at it up there. It's the same empty walls with maybe a little bit of electronics work starting somewhere on the floor somewhere, and uh, and that's it. Was there anything new? No. Was there any furniture? No. Was there any console? No. Was there any board? No. Was there any radio equipment? No. Was there anything that I didn't see four or five weeks before? No. No. And we're sitting in here with the most Mickey Mouse primitive pile of turd that I have ever seen in the history of my frickin' life. Oh, go make magic for us, Neil. Go make magic. Yeah, go make... Okay? That's what you're good at. 5670560. Oh, and how about that 800 line, too, Greg, for our friends over there on the West Coast? What about that? Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But that costs money. Oh, sorry. Here's a mobile in Miami Beach. Hello. Hi, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. Um, Neil, a couple of things. First of all, I moved here three years ago. Oh, and uh, it wasn't for the fact that I travel a lot, I yeah. lose my mind. Uh, and a couple of places in Italy maybe you haven't visited, which are great places. Have you visited the Asiatic coast? No. Rimini, which is in the North Asiatic coast, south of Venice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And also Brazil on the South Asiatic side is right. very nice. Right. Yeah. Uh, I oh, and you only to... have these short vacations for a few days. You know, people think i got all this vacation time, but it takes a day to travel over and then a day back. So you've got, you know, maybe seven days. How many places can you really go see? That's absolutely. the problem. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, uh, in the future, you'll travel more, right? Right. There you go. Uh, I was in Borders in Kendall yesterday. Yes, sir. They are, they are ab advertising your appearance. Uh, I did see prominently displayed... Uh, posters and flyers advertising that you're coming there mm -hmm. so uh and i live in kendall so i'll be there and uh i'll be buying some cds and getting them autographed well it's going to be a real revelation to me if we have a turnout tomorrow because the, the amount of response we get on the phone here day after day after day from Kent, from uh, dade county non-existent it's like we're speaking a uh, foreign language or maybe they are well, well we'll see but i'll be there and i'll see you tomorrow okay thank you Fine. the line is route to a date very uh, lovely kid Paul, by the way, on his head. A yarmulke, a skull cap, a, a token of uh, ancient uh, bubble mice. But at any rate, uh, Jeff Cohen's in there with all the good food with his uh, newly dyed orange hair. I wonder, look at that. Did you notice that? What is that all about? Jesus, every time I see this guy, he gets freakier and freakier and freakier. And what am I supposed to do with this? Jesus. See, this is the problem with you. The food is always good. You overdo it. You overdo it. You overfeed. You're like a, a Jewish food pusher is what you are. Yeah, thank you. So. Oh, that's right. Take good care of him. Keep your eye on him every minute, 24 hours a day, okay? So he's definitely going to be burning, burning on that lake of fires on Geneva Lake. Thank you very much, as usual. No, no, get out of here already. Stop being such a goddamn Jewish food pusher, will you please? Oh! Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Great. Just a couple of things. Um, you were asking a while ago, why the hell are you going to go down to Kendall and all that? You're going to go down to Kendall because you got a lot of fans down in Kendall. I live in Kendall, and I'm going to go see you at Borders tomorrow. Oh! Great. Well, that's why I bought uh, my uh, Best of Meals CD. Yeah, we're doing real good in that store, by the way, in Kendall, for some reason. 
Are you? Okay, okay. Then you are going to have a good turnout. Maybe Another the thing, people in Dade County have nothing to say. Maybe that's it. <laughs> uh, um, the fish on a stick. You know, I've never seen that anywhere. Where do they sell that? Uh, in, in the mobile stations. Any time you see a mobile gas station, go over there. Over in Broward? Huh? In Broward, you mean? All over the place. Dave oh, okay. Broward. They got them. All right, and uh, thanks to you, uh, my wife and I are now about 20 pounds fatter because of fish food. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll all do the Atkins together someday. All right, Neil. See you tomorrow, pal. Neil, can I make a change to play? Yeah. A song you never play, the Gelby song. Okay. All right. You got it. We have an open line in Broward, two in Dade County, five line. Here's Hollywood. Hello. Neil, how the hell are you? Okay. I want to touch all the topics of the day here for you. Yeah, we've had so much response on them, too. It's tremendous. Well, first of all, the thing last night on 48 Hours, because um, I was watching that, and I watched a little bit of the Panthers part while they were down, you know, 4 nothing. and uh -huh. I kept going back and forth. But, you know, that, I agree with you. Everybody that's... Uh, First of all, when you're in high school, the 17-year-old girls don't want to be bothered with you when you're 17. Because they're screwing the 21-year-old people. Right. So, you know, you're left with whatever's going to give it up. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's the 14- and 15-year-old girl. Yeah. And that's the way it's been, and that's the way it's always going to be, because they want to date the seniors. So Yeah, that, that seemed to be the, the message in the story last night, is that they were smitten with the seniors, and that, uh, you know, that, that made them feel uh, better about themselves, that they were able to um, latch onto the seniors. They were and, accepted. They're accepted right. by the upperclassmen, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they're the jock, or the, if you, this guy was apparently the head of the MOC, the big man on campus. Right. And, uh, you know, and the, the, it was just another feather in his cap. And, and, I, and I just don't understand this deal about they kept coming back for more. I mean, how can well, you cry exactly, rape? Exactly. You know, you're raped. You, you're out there. I'm, you know, look. You're going to run out crying, you know, something's wrong. You're going right. to run to the police. You're not going to run back and spread your legs again. Right. I mean, I even you mean, are too embarrassed like a lot of women are. They're okay. humiliated. They're embarrassed so they don't go to their parents. They don't go to the police. But they sure as hell don't come back for more. But, you know, when I was in high school, Neil, I mean, you're dating the 10th graders. Because you know what? They were like, oh, well, I'm going out with a senior. I mean, it was that was the way it is, and I'm sure it is that way now. I mean, I'm far removed from high school, but I'm sure that type of mentality hasn't changed. Absolutely. Because the good-looking seniors... They didn't want nothing to do with. They didn't want nothing to do with you. They thought they were above you. Mm -hmm. As far as so the Panthers go, that was a pretty good game last night. A little sleeper. To, you know, I was ready to turn it off and going back and forth to a stupid hearing. But that has got to be the most monotonous thing. Watching this geek looking yeah. at the camera. And then, then they said nothing. They it just kept going on and on and on, and nobody ever said a goddamn thing. And he kept drinking that stupid water out of that plastic and that guy, cup. From New York, Natalie. I, I was listening to you yesterday. I was on the road, and when I saw that, man. I'm going to tell you. How many pushes does that guy one have? One trip to the pizza loft would put that Jerome Nadler guy right over the oh edge. He, he, he would explode into a billion pieces. That was unbelievable. And as far as the area goes, you know, so Channel 10, that's that watched your piece last night. It's like everything. They, they beef it up, and they don't do anything. And when they always do these shows on you, they don't really tell you what yeah, you're doing. They, they give about. a big build up and the big promos, exactly. which were fine, and then they show a piece that says absolutely nothing and has got filled with misinformation, and I have an ability to say absolutely nothing on there, and they show my little stupid black dog, and then that's it. Yeah, uh, you know, as far as, you know, we already knew that. Yeah. I mean, tell us something, you know, what a great guy you are, you know, uh, you know, I, that's what I would have wanted to see, like, what, you know. Or maybe even tell the public what radio station I'm on and what time, that would have been nice. But, Neil, this is broadcasting. They don't do stuff that makes sense. Okay, pal. Later. We have an open line in Broward 2 in line as we continue thrashing our way through, fighting the good fight, eating the good food. I got meatballs, I got Italian sausage, I got onions, a little bit of sauce here from the pizza law in Davie. at 3514 South University Drive, right behind Pier 1 Imports in that plaza that used to be called, but don't say it because they get upset. Why, why do they get upset when you say that? Do the people from the uh, shopping center get upset about that? Yeah, Jeff is saying yes. Oh, he's, now he's coming in here. That was a bad move. What? Yeah. Well, like, you think it used to be called Loman's Plaza, but that's just your imagination, okay? It is? It is Pizza Loft Plaza? You just make that up. Oh, it's the Pizza Loft Plaza in Davie there, right south of 595, between Griffin and 595, right beyond Pier 1 Imports. Don't you think Pier 1 Imports is a landmark? I mean, even, the, even our audience can find that. Okay, get out of here, please. Getting on my nerve. Especially with that orange hair. Or maybe he's trying to be another Boog Shambi. 
Look at that. This man has got like a combination between yellow and orange here. He's like a cross between Geldy and between a booster and what's his name upstairs on Power 96? What's his name for the yellow here? 1256 at... Carlos. Carlos. Oh, like a secret about that, that Carlos has yellow hair? He's a good guy. He even called me Mr. Rogers yesterday. I thought, well, what the hell did I ever do to him? Hey, Nick. It's UAM. What is it? Oh, we're back on the air. Oh, Jeff uh, Corn just said the F word, too, by the way. Okay, we're back on the air. The Neil Rogers Ship Lauderdale. It's the one to two hours. Jeff Cohen said the F word, by the way. Did it make it on the air? We hope. Get us a 90 share easy. 200 lines open, by the way. Never washed his hair or seemed to have a care, Cobain. His name was Kurt. Now he's pushing up there, Cobain. Wiping drool from his chin, doing heroin, Cobain. Nirvana was hot, and now it's Kurt they ain't got, Cobain. He got high, said goodbye, then he died. Crap. Made a million an hour, never took a shower, Cobain. He's a number one hit in heaven, Big Mosh Pit, Cobain. He'll meet Elvis the King and say grunge was my thing, Cobain. So if you're filled with doubt, don't take Kurt's way out, Cobain. He got high, said goodbye, then he died, Cobain. 104, 560, WQM. It's our big one to two hour. I apologize for the dead air at the top of the hour, but Jeff Cohen was in here going, bop, 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 bop. I'm telling you all kinds of perverted, disgusting, and true stories. Which, uh, quite frankly, in the middle of my lunch hour, I don't want to hear these stories. Don't you understand? I'm not interested in hearing about all your dis- your perverted, your anal love beads, your... Uh, I don't want to hear about it. All his tryst with Al Goldstein. We have an open line in Dade 1 in Broward, 5670560 and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. If you're going on a diet, go over to Pizza Loft. Just got this special deal for five bucks, no food. He'll just sit you down at the table and tell you about his whole, all his sexual escapades. You won't eat for a week. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. I'll be in uh, Las Vegas next week. Yeah. I'll come and look you up. Yeah. Where are you staying, MGM? Right. I'll be at the Excalibur. Great. Right across the street. Yes. And I don't think that story was too bad with uh, Diane Mag. I thought it was horrendous. Uh, well, it wasn't anything derogatory. You know, it was... But it was, it was nothing. It was inaccurate. It was, uh, it was bullcrap. Yeah, but it just gave your, uh, just your style of speech. That's all we wanted. It gave what? Your style. You know, nice, laid back. Yeah. Easy. Passed okay. out? Pardon? Passed out. Passed out, okay. Oh, okay, I'll see you in Vegas. Okay, bye. I'll see you at the 7-Eleven there on, uh, on the Strip. We have an open line in uh, Dade, 567 and 1 in Broward. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Obviously, nobody saw the 48 hours piece last night, which is too bad, because your kids out there, they're uh, screwing their brains out. I hate to break the news to you. Or you already know. So I guess these people just don't care about that. And they also don't have, well, you know, you've got a bunch of protective parents who were all screwing around when they were in high school, but now it's a different, when it's their kids, it's a whole different story. When it's their kids, it's a whole different story, baby. And the time that you're spending right now listening to this show, you could be better used to t- taking this time to talk to your kids about the evils of marijuana. Thanks, Jeff. See you again someday, not too soon. Jeff brings his rabbi in here who is now uh, glued to him at the hip and goes around with him everywhere, his Orthodox rabbi, and is watching over him like a hawk. Here's a mobile in Oakland Park. Hello. Why do you continue to hate Neil? To hate Neil? I guess. Two questions. Since this is not a sports show, 
Why so do let, you me, let me ask you a question. No, the, the question is, why do you continue to listen? I haven't, you I haven't to talked too much. I haven't two minutes hockey. of hockey on this show today, okay, sir? And if that's the best material, if that's the best shot that you can come up with, try one of these. Okay, right in your temple. In fact, the rabbi just came back. He said, we'll even do it in his temple. And he'll say a bracha for you as you're going down. That's the best they can do. All these creative guys with their great shots, okay? In the meantime, pal, you're still listening. And God only knows waited how long on the phone to come up with his uh, four seconds of fame. Two open lines in Brown. Miami. Hello. What's up, Neil? How you doing, sir? All right. Adam Sandler movie the other day, and he becomes some big time football player, and then he goes to a Lawrence Taylor camp, and after he gets the point across, Lawrence Taylor says something like, yeah, and don't smoke any crack either. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Isn't that what that's what that's in the pros and cons book? Right. Whatever you say, pal. Whatever he said. Open line in day two in Broward. Five, six. Another uh, Spanglish baby talk guy. Here's a mobile in Cutler Ridge. Hello. Mobile in Cutler Ridge. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at Borders. Uh huh. I'm one of the uh, few in uh, Dade, I suppose, who listen to you, but I really think there are more of us. We just, uh, I guess, Must be we, a gigantic uh, closet in Dade County, or maybe it's this phone system. I don't know what the story is. And I think uh, you are right in revising your uh, moron from 90 to 98 percent, and uh, maybe 99 percent. Mm -hmm. brought it up. <laughs> well, I did see the thing on Channel 10, and. I I, I, I I don't know. Maybe it was inaccurate uh, from what you saw, but you, you know, obviously. You well, first of all, let me say it again. John lives in my house. He's lived with me for five years. He's my lover, my boyfriend, my uh, oh, butt bump well, buddy, whatever the hell he was trying to make out it was. Number two, uh, the, you know, there was no mention of this radio station or what time I'm on or where I'm on or what the hell I do. And other than that, they showed the cap of the uh, joints on it, which was fine. But other than that, it was uh, there was nothing. There was nothing there. Yeah. Well, you're, you're right. That they never talk about the stuff. I mean, if they want to show the nicer side of Neil, there was never any mention of the money I've raised for Camillo's house, the campaign we're doing now for Center One. I mean, it was, all they did was just milk like television does best. They milked with the promos all week long to get people to tune in, and then they gave you a little puff piece, and then they went on with their usual bull crap, and that was it. Yeah. And did nothing for me. Well, it definitely gave the impression of what, what, what you said, so I uh, guess it was very inaccurate. Okay. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. See ya. Take care. Don't forget, noon to two, Borders and Kendall, Mars. Two open lines at Broward. I mean, next thing you know, they'll dig up Ann Bishop's body, and they'll have her on there with Sandy Payton or something like that. That'll be next on Channel 10. Oh! And her full-time companion, Sandy, or whatever the hell they're going to do. Hey, where do you go when you're feeling lucky? Bird, right where you got hey, it. Hey, Sports Radio 560 QAM. Neil, God. Here's a fact from one of our chronic uh, tuning factors. Alan says, Diane Magnum is great sitting behind a desk and reading a teleprompter, but when she goes out to do some reporting, watch out. Says a couple of months ago, she did a whatever happened to report about Kimberly Bergalis, the girl who got aid from uh, Stuart Dennis and her parents. After showing old footage of Kimberly testifying before Congress in an interview with her parents, a tearful Diane reported that Kimberly's parents would never give up until the law was passed to require health professionals to be screened for HIV so this never happens again. What Diane left out was that since the Bergalis case seven years ago, there is not a single documented case of a health provider infecting a patient. This fact, of course, lends credence to the theory that the dentist in question purposely, for whatever reason, infected his unfortunate patients. In other words, costly and intrusive screening would have no purpose. An email sent to Diane received no response, and as far as I know, no clarification on the point has ever aired. Oh! Says Attorney Allen, one of our uh, listeners. Well, what can I say, Allen? At least uh, she may not be good, but she's consistent. That fucking bitch. Yeah. And maybe it is only a nitpicking point about the fact that if you're going to do a story, get it right. But uh, like I said, well, who needs it? See, that's one thing you have to ask in life when you get involved in these kinds of things. Are they using you or are you using them? Usually, it's a combination of both. They're using you and you're using them for a little free publicity. But in this case, uh, we got squad. Here's Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Great. Hey, I got the best diet there is, man. It's called the Larry King diet. Yeah. I got a picture of him in my uh -huh. kitchen. And I got a 
picture of him in my wallet. Every time I got hungry, I'd look at him and I'd say, Me, so horny. Hey, what are you, some kind of sex machine here? Uh-huh. It's yeah. barf time every time I see him. Mm-hmm. Anyway, for me. Um, how come, uh, you know, how come you never, you never talked about, uh, um, what, what's the name of your friend? John. John. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, I've seen him with you in, uh, in hockey games. And what stuff do you like mean? That. I've never talked about him. I mentioned him by name. What would you like? His shoe size? Or? No, but I mean, I mean, is he normal or, you know? Is he normal? Yeah. Is, is he gay or is he... Why, are you writing a book? Do you want a date? No, but you, you, never, you never talked about him. Well, do I talk about my... Uh, what, what do I do I talk about my brother? Do I talk about my aunt? Do I talk about... Mama. Uh, huh? I talk about your mother. Very rarely. Only about lunch and mommies on Tuesday. Oh, well, maybe I'll see you tomorrow, man. No, I hope not. God, talk about getting a life. Open line, is he normal? That was the best question of the year. Is he normal? No. Am I normal? No. Is that caller normal? No. Are my dogs normal? No. Is there anybody out there normal? No. Is Norma Kent normal? No. Well, only with the Apollo organization. Is he normal? Oh, sir, you are the epitome of what's wrong with uh, Little Havana. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil, how you doing? Okay. Hey, uh, big fan. Haven't been listening for a long time, but I really dig the show. I think you're right on target. When it comes to, like, everything you talk about, all the bitching and money you do about Miami, I think you're right on point. I have a bone to pick with you about uh, something you said on that, that whammy, whammy show you had. Uh, it was a, a while back. You talking about Pulp Fiction, and you said that it was a piece of crap. It is. Why? Because that's my opinion. I mean, you say, why? It's a garbage movie. It's idiotic. You don't think it's, like, spontaneous and fresh? And no, not, like, it's, for not, me? it's not the least bit fresh. And the dialogue in the beginning with John Travolta in the car talking about putting mayonnaise on the French fries in Amsterdam, I mean, that is, that to me, once you get to that scene, you can just shut it off and say the rest of it is going to be even worse, which it is. Just a bunch of gratuitous violence. It's like taking, it's like taking the Joe Pesci scene in the bar in Goodfellas where he shoots the kid and just making a whole movie out of it. Just repeating it over and over again. Crap. It's garbage. Uh, I, I tend to disagree. I think well, it's... Uh, you know, if you like it, uh, if, you're, if, you, if you want it cool and hip and trendy, that's the kind of movie you say you like. It's Pulp Fiction and Blue Velvet and stuff like that. Oh, no, nah, I wouldn't say so. I, I mean, I, whatever. I mean, whatever. Great show. Keep up the good work. Okay, see ya. And like I said, it's still a bunch of... Crap. Oh. Pulp Fiction. That, that, that scene in the car, he, repeated at least 6,422 times about, hey, you know what they put on their fries in Amsterdam? Mayonnaise. Wow. As if I didn't already know that, of course, you know, which makes it a little bit more ponderous and boring. And, and, and by the way, if you go to Amsterdam and the one thing that you notice that really uh, you bring back home with you is the fact that they put mayonnaise on their uh, uh, fries, get the <laughs> out of here. Yeah, right. What a piece of crap movie that is. It is a gigantic crap on, uh, on wheels. But, hey, if you like it, you like it. I mean, you know, there are guys that like vanilla ice cream, too. What can I tell you? I like Ben & Jerry's. I like uh, someone with a little taste to it. You know, everybody, everybody's got their own thing. Even even uh, some of guys on this station like Andy's. I like ice. Oh, there you go. Here's um, Plantation. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Great. First of all, did you see the whole movie, Pulp Fiction? No, of course not. Okay, because you're th- it's not the only thing he said about it. He said it once about the mayonnaise. He also went into the uh, beer in the McDonald's. He also went into the hash bars and everything else. I watched it on a plane coming back a couple of years ago, coming back from one of my 80 million European trips. Right. And it was one of those planes where they give you the a little your own personal VCR and you pick out the movie. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, well... I, you know, I've heard so much about this, and here I'm a captive audience for the next 500 hours. I'll watch it. I'll, you know, I'll make an honest attempt to watch it. And I watched about 45 minutes of it, and I popped that baby out of there, and I said, give me another movie and get this out of it. Well, if you ever get the urge and you really want no. to sit down, I think you'll enjoy the movie. Pay the attention. What else was I looking at? I'm on the plane. Am I sniffing farts from the seat in front of me? I'm, I'm watching the movie. What else am I going to be doing? Yeah, you're doing what you criticize everybody else for doing is taking a half-assed piece of something and, and going from there. 45 of the minutes is a half-assed piece? Well, if you watched it for 45 minutes, like you said, you would have realized that he spoke about mayonnaise once, and there was a lot more involved in Amsterdam, so not... You know, let, sir, let me say it to you again. I didn't like the okay. movie. I'm not going to watch it again. Is that okay? That works for me. You'll have a good weekend. And okay, back to you. See, this idea, it's, it's like I love fish food. Maybe you like vanilla ice cream. Maybe you like uh, butter crunch. Maybe you like butter pecan. Maybe you like plain Neapolitan ice cream, chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla. Hey, more power to you. That doesn't make you a bad person because you don't have the same opinion. It's like these sports nerds on this station. Oh, the Gators, you're an asshole because you like the Gators. Or whatever. What the hell difference does it make? 
Jesus Christ, all the other important things there are to argue and kill each other about, like religion and stuff like that. And these people got to have a verbal brawl because you don't like the same stupid movie or the same kind of ice cream or the same uh, sports team. It's like these assholes that get drunk and get into fights at ball games because, uh, well, that's the macho thing to do. Yeah, you're a, a Jets fan. You're a, well, whatever the hell you are. So, may come as a shock to you. There might actually be some nice Jets fans. I mean, I doubt it, but there might. Here's a mobile in Oakland Park. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Are you denying the fact that you two don't share a bed with Oh, God. Blow it out your ass. Am I denying the fact? Why don't you come over to the house, pal? You can investigate. John's bedroom, my bedroom. Okay, no, that's just a ruse. That's just a cover-up. The fact that we have two separate... Am I denying the fact? Like we got an inquisition going on here, sir. Since they took this guy, since they took his website away and his chat room, this guy's got nothing going in his life. I don't think you're, you're sharing a bedroom with yourself. That's the problem. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. How are you today? Great. Uh, I've been listening to you. I found you at uh, when you were still on at night some years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've followed you ever since. And anytime I get in the car that you're on, you're on with me. Great. Uh, I think that you underestimate your, your audience. I've never uh, told you before. I've been listening to you for many, many years. I think there are many, many, many people like me. They just never get to a phone and uh, just never want to maybe pick up. Maybe they're intimidated. Well, that's the overwhelming majority of people don't ever call a talk show, not just this one. They don't call any uh, talk show. I'm just saying that the overwhelming majority of your listeners don't call you. Right. But, uh, but if you, uh, I mean, uh, you're well aware of what you created several years ago with the situation. Yeah. Uh, and with I mean, the fish I, food. I mean, I went, the down, burgers. I went down to the Sawgrass Mills when... Uh, and I didn't believe that yeah. uh, that many people showed up. We had 72 million people lined up. I mean, what you've done for the uh, with the fish, I personally don't happen to like the fish, but uh, beside the point, what you've done for put uh, for putting behinds in the uh, in the hockey seat. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, the, the Panthers should bow down. That's right. They should kiss my behind. What you've done to raise money? Uh, look, this is an unpaid commercial. Yeah. What you've done to raise money for? You, what you've done to raise money? even so envy out there in, in California. Right. And not for the selfies. Right. I mean, it, 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 uh, people don't realize Kitty that. Hoover out the moon, man. Right. Now, unfortunately, uh, I, I happen to listen to uh, Channel 10 News. Unfortunately, uh, the piece last night, uh, as you claim, was not, uh, they didn't give enough information. And I think the reason for that is that you were only allowed a very, very short period of time. Uh, maybe just a couple of minutes. Right. And they try to squeeze in whatever they did in that period of time. But well, well, let me ask you this. If that's the case, if it was a real tight on time in this piece, how come they had time to show 15 seconds of me sitting at the track and showing the horses? As, as if the people well, don't... You know, when, when I tell you I go to the track to Pompano Park, most people know what a horse looks like, okay? They know what a horse race looks like. They yeah. don't need to see 15 seconds of the two minutes my, the back of my head watching a race at the racetrack. You know what I'm saying? But, but Neil, you, you are conversant enough to know that when you even give uh, print reporters a story, when you see the story after you give it... Oh, yeah, it's totally different. That's sometimes right. Sometimes you don't even recognize that's why, it. That's why usually I don't even talk to them anymore. So, so it's very, very... I mean, when reporters get a, get a piece, and uh, sometimes you don't recognize that this is you. Yeah. But, but I, I do want to say this, uh, as I said before... Enough for the selfie. Yeah. The first, time, the first time I've ever called you, I've never had the nerve to pick it up and do it before. Uh, I want to congratulate you on the job you're doing. Well, thank I, you. I, I, uh, I, I'm only sorry that that, uh, that Phil left because the one two punch yep. that you guys had was well, he, he's not sorry that he left. I'll tell you that. Okay, thanks a lot, pal. Okay, bye. Let me go tell myself off. We have an open line in Broward. Five six seven zero oh, five. Everyone given a traffic ticket were searched. The people wouldn't stand for it. They said. Chief Justice William Rehnquist, that Nazi bastard, quoted. Uh, noted that police have authority to conduct a search to protect their own safety. Justice Antonin Scalia asked Chambers whether an officer could stop someone, arrest, and search them, then drop the arrest. She said yes. Scalia said, wow. And on and on it went. Justice Anthony Kennedy noted the Supreme Court's 1973 decision allows police to conduct a search, in search incident to arrest. You want to turn it around and have an arrest incident to search, he said, as in no way, Jose. But like I said, get those Grateful Dead bumper stickers off your car because the porkers will pull your ass over and tear your car apart and uh, make your life miserable, do a strip search, stick their nose in your rectum, and make your life worthless. Here's a mobile in uh, Kendall. Hello. Hello. 
Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Neil, just want to let you know, I've uh, just been uh, listening to you just recently, and uh, I just want to let you know your, uh, your humor is quite refreshing. Uh, I had a couple questions for you. One, um, do you ever get any, uh, any noise from the uh, management from the radio station when you really, you know, go for it, when you just let it all out? The only it's... noise I get from them is... <clears throat> yeah, I'm No not... noise. I hear you, I hear you. The other thing is, um, I heard you uh, talking about uh, the cruising and stuff like that. I was curious, were you talking about, like, um, those gambling cruises? Or are you talking about, like, cruising in general? People go out for a seven-day cruise? Both. Both. Have you ever been on a cruise before? Yes, once. And wh who were you, who'd you go with? I was just curious. What do you mean, who would I go with? Like, uh, what, what cruise line did you go oh, with? Oh, it was a long time ago. I would never go again, ever. Ah, you, but you think that uh, the industry hasn't changed at all? If it's, it, you know. Well, I see these people disappearing in the middle of hurricanes. I see these people getting seasick and having fires on the boat, and uh, nobody reporting it in time, and then taking days to get their luggage. I, my, my idea of having a good vacation is not being a captive audience at sea, because at least you know you get on a plane and you go somewhere. You're not having a good time, so you hop on a plane, you go someplace else. But once you're out there in the middle of the ocean, my friend, or in the middle of the Caribbean, you're a, a captive audience. Unless you want to jump overboard. No, I hear you. I hear you. I know, I know Not my cup of tea. I hate it. Well, listen, I just want to let you know you're doing a great job. Thanks a lot, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Open line in Dade County. So I don't like cruise ships. I don't like Pulp Fiction. God, am I a son of a bitch, right? Oh! You bet. What the wrong with you, mister? Plus, not being normal, we know that. According to that spick that called before. Isn't that redundant, normal spick? Or is that redundant or uh, axi moron? Is he normal? Oh my God! That that um, write that down, okay? Write down the time, the day. Uh, etch it on your ankle. Here's a call from Englewood. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Hello, broadcaster. This uh, I'm from the East Coast, though. Uh, I want to go over to the jet game in a couple of weeks. Oddly enough, you just said uh, something about jet fans. Well, what do you mean you want to go over to the jet game? What what does that mean? They'll be uh, the Jets will be playing Miami uh, in about three weeks here on a uh, nighttime uh, Sunday night at eight o'clock. Yeah. And my brother's coming down from Florida, and I haven't been over to Miami yet. I must be admit that probably 15 years. Where's a great place to stay? Number one, number two. A great place to stay in Miami? Yeah, uh, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I-95 like overpass at about 135th. Okay. And good place to eat. Uh, Camilla, Camilla, Camilla's house. Camilla's house. And also. <clears throat> Well, in the new stadium, what it would probably be considered a decent seat. I don't want to be stuck in an end zone. Uh, nosebleeds. <laughs> upper deck, you think? Yeah, upper deck is the best. Like 403 is good. I think you're kidding me. 403, okay. Have a good time, pal. Thanks. Okay. Well, what, what's wrong with that? He's going to start out at the Camillo's house, have a nice meal there. They'll camp out overnight under the I-95 overpass there. Maybe they can even get a street corner for a couple of days while they're there. Like I-95 at, uh, what's a real good one, 103rd? And I-95? Oh, yeah, they got guys okay. with the signs there, but uh, they they went by the half hour because it's uh, like a heavy traffic intersection. And then he can go up in the nosebleed there, bring his own oxygen, have a hell of a good time. I thought it was a call from, like, Englewood, New Jersey, someplace like that, or maybe Tenafly. That was like Englewood, Florida. Oh, God. And he's in broadcasting? Is that what that guy said? <laughs> Here's a mobile in South Miami. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. That last guy was great. I thought... Uh... I think when he calls up information, he's going to get he's going to ask for the Hyatt overpass. Uh huh. But uh, Neil, yeah, Camillo House, uh, great buffet by the way, five thirty every afternoon, sir, at the Camillo House. Yeah, right. Um, Neil, um, I totally agree with you about Pulp Fiction. So many people when that movie came out. I'm kind of a critique of movies, and everybody. I mean, I'm a, I'm a critic of movies. The dialogue it was, was to puke from. The movie was crap, and uh, uh, something else is kind of in a, in a way related. Um, what do you think of Robin Williams? Funny guy doing his stand-up routine. The worst movies in the history of the human race. I, I have Other than it. Good Morning Vietnam, every movie that this man made was a la bamba. It was a disaster. I'm not just talking about his movies. I have yet to hear him say, say anything funny. I, everybody, that's another thing. Everybody tells me, oh, he's a comic genius. No, he is. He's, a, he's a funny guy. He really is. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I disagree. Uh, now, the only, the only problem being, though, that the last... You know how guys become parodies of themselves? Like Rich Little. Yeah. The impersonator Rich Little sure. became a parody of himself. And Robin Williams has done the same thing. He's always on. He's always doing that same that same routine, you know. My, my theory on Rich Little was that he really didn't even have a personality. He right. had no personality. Right. All right, Neil. But he was good, good in that bottom square, though. Okay, have a great day. Yeah, they brought back Hollywood Square. Is anybody watching that? No. No good. Let's bring back the old people, okay? Just, uh, just prop them up in the seats. They're all dead. Paul Lind in the center square. Charlie Arquette, Cliff Weaver, Weaver there in the bottom left hand. Huh? George Goble. 
All the dead people were the great Hollywood squares. Let's hear it. Peter Marshall, he may not be dead, but he sure looked it toward the end there. Oh, by the way, his uh, son's name was Pete Lacock. Did you know that? He was a baseball player, played for the Cubs very brief briefly, professional baseball player. Pete Lacock was Peter Marshall's son. Huh? How do you like that? Lost story. We have an open line of Dave, five six line. In fact, speaking of that, Barney Frank last night, maybe he's a little punchy toward the end of the evening, but you know how he's got like a little, uh, kind of a, uh, almost a Brian Murray esque speech problem? Probably from having too many strange things in his mouth. But at any rate, uh, he was talking about how they were cutting down the time, and this was supposed to be so important, and he, he was trying to say, now all of a sudden everybody's watching the clock. But the, you know, he must have said it about four times in a row, and consistently. Please, the L just didn't quite make it in there each time he said clock. You know what I'm saying? It, uh, you know, he wanted to put it in there, so to speak. But the L just, uh, and they all looked at him and said, maybe you're watching it, Bar uh, what, Barney Fag, whatever your name is. And as a result, Hank's going to be late today, so we have the uh, kitty core. we got Josh and Jason and Clarence and Jason and Josh and... Uh, and Corey. And Corey. Did I say Clarence? Oh, wait a minute. Corey is... I get them all confused. It, to me, Clarence it's all like... Josh. I beg your pardon? Clarence is Josh. Darrow. Clarence Dero, yes. But to me, it's like all the same person, isn't it? Isn't it like only one people doing like four different voices? Because this... We can't afford like have a half a dozen different people, right? Uh-huh. Here's uh, Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello. Yes? Uh, yeah, I was wanting to know if you caught what happened to Jeff Bookaboom last night. No. Oh, you just showed on the ESPN and CNNSI. He got cold cocked by Johnson from uh, the Kings last night and was knocked out cold on the ice. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest fighters in the NHL just completely knocked out. Good. And from what I understand, they're really going to suspend Johnson. So they're looking for the seven-game uh, $1,000 suspension. Yeah, now, who did they just give the seven games to? Or was that uh, Nazarov, Nazarov from Tampa? Yeah, they just got cross checked. Good, because he's a real piece of crap. Why is it that Tampa, in spite of the fact that they have this horrible, lousy team, every year they have to have at least one or two of the dirtiest players in the league? Well, I mean, if you're not winning, you know, what the hell are you yeah, You might as well beat the crap out of somebody. Might as well be a right. jerk about them, Good point. And uh, one more thing I wanted to point out. Unfortunately, when I started my car this morning, uh, I had the first team on. Yes. Yeah. And I heard uh, Jeff DeForest refer to Bubby Brister Monday night looking like Joe Montana. Oh, my God. I don't know. That, that's like Terry Murray saying that Paul Laws last night played like Bobby Orr. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know where he got that thought that Bubby Brister is anything of what Joe Montana was. He's always under a lot of stress. You know, when you got as many gambling debts as he's got, under a lot of stress. Oh, well, maybe Eddie Kay can help him. I don't know. Okay, see ya. All right. <laughs> huh. Not that we have any gambling degenerates on this station, do we? No, we don't have any of those. Two open line. In fact, uh, Depot is going to, uh, he's going to be an old uh, track bum. You can just see that. He's getting real scurvy looking and didn't shave today and uh, yeah, real fat. He's got a perfect figure than mine. He's going to turn into another Al Goldstein, but he'll be one of those uh, guys sitting down there by the rail at the track. Panhandler. Here's uh, West Palm Beach. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Happy Hanukkah. Back to you. Um... Uh, you heard you mention Peter Marshall before. Mm -hmm. Here's a Peter Marshall update, which you might know. You might, but he works for your old friend, Buddy Bud. Really? He's got a game show on the new Pax TV. And the game of show is called Real to Real, and it's produced, you know, by Buddy Bud. And, and it's, uh, it's he's terrible. Absolutely oh my terrible. god! Yeah. Absolutely terrible. It's in like a rubber glove, then. Absolutely. So that's your Peter Marshall update. Thanks for the good news. My pleasure. And whatever happened to old Pete Lacock? We have three open lines in the Broward. Five, six isn't a bad player, just that they say, with a name like that, you've got to be finding something else to do. Bad for the image of baseball. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. First time caller, long time listener. Um, I want to ask you about Ben and Jerry's because um, I've been looking everywhere for this specific Ben and Jerry's that I had once. It was uh, peanut butter and jelly. Do you know where they sell that? Yeah, probably in a store would be a good place to find it. We have an open line in uh, day two and Broward. It's always a first-time caller, too. Always the first time in this hour, this quarter hour. Let's go to Miami Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, um, um, I'm not out throwing any baseballs, but I'm um, from Haiti. I've um, been here for five years. Yeah, I'm on your show. <laughs> My girlfriend is Jewish, but she doesn't like your show. But yeah, I, uh, She's Jewish and she doesn't like this show? No, she doesn't. What's I don't her know. problem? I don't know. What is she, some kind of a Jap? <laughs> I don't know. But I, I love your TV show. It's a shame it's not on anymore. 
What do you mean it's not? Who said it's not on anymore? Oh, it is. It's on every night, 10.30. Oh, 10.30, okay. Um, I'm probably the only Haitian down here in Dayton that listens to you, but hey. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm number one in Haitians, man. <laughs> I am monster in the Haitian community. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you, you know? oh, Okay, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. And slap that bitch around a little bit. Straighten her ass out. Jewish bitch. And by the way, have we heard from one woman all day today? No. I don't think so. What? Oh, there's one on. The lady mobile in uh, Miami Springs. Hello. Yes. Hello, Neil. Yes, ma'am. I am a speak from Miami Springs. Right. And I have a phone. And I know it's a piece of crap. And I want to know why you never write from such a Laura update. Why never what? Write on her. On who? That's a Laura. You don't know who she is? Hello? Dr. Laura. Dr. Laura? Yeah, a lady that is on now uh, nine forty wing. Yeah. Okay. You think I would waste my time with that bitch? That fucking bitch. I wouldn't waste my time with her, with that man hating bitch. Miss Goody Goody Two Shoes. Yeah, Miss. Uh, I am uh, my my mom. Yeah. I, I am my I, uh, children's mom. I'm uh, my mother's uh, mother. Yeah. I know. What yeah. a. Bitch. I wouldn't waste I my time that with that woman. Bitch. Why would anybody waste our time calling her show? To be offended and, you know, treat it like the way she treats it. Right, but why would they waste their time doing that when they could call here and do it? Exactly. Okay, have a great day, sweetheart. You too. I'll stick in your feet. Okay, we have two open lines in day two in Broward. About Dr. Laura? That f***ing bitch. I can understand a word she said between uh, that bad cell phone. We got some bad cell phones out there, boys and girls. We got to do something about that real soon or else you want to get a great call. Foxborough for their Monday night showdown with the Patriots. Countdown to kickoff starts at 4. Bill Zimper and Jim Mandich call the action at 8.15 Monday on Sports Radio 560 QAM. Gordon gives South Florida a major blowjob. Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Schlesinger, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about douching. Because it takes a real sourpuss bitch like me to tell you how to do it right. Besides, you don't know how to do it anyway. You're probably too stupid. Well, what I do is I spread my legs like this, kind of upside down, and squish in Ponderosa lemons. Nothing works better than Ponderosa lemons. Just give it a little squish. It's the Internet Slot, 155 at 560 WQAM. Oh, by the way, I forgot to even mention the thing about the Patriots moving to uh, Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> Building that 68,000-seat state. I hope they draw 500 people a game. Serve them right. Bob Kraft and all of his crap, okay? Hartford, Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut is a sports town like Batavia, New York is a major league sports town. They already tried their crap with the Whalers, and they managed to, you know, had a couple of years they drew some people, and most of the last several years, and the proof is in the pudding, they moved temporarily to Greensboro, North Carolina, where they're drawing like 70 people a game, including the concessionaires. Hartford, Connecticut. Nice going as we watch sports disintegrate. And how'd you like all those yellow seats like I predicted at the Fleet Center last night, huh? Yellow seats disguised as paying patrons at the Bruins game. Here's Palm Beach. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. You're the best thing that happened in this town since Wayne Coffin, the blue-eyed show, brother. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, we we're uh, talking about Amsterdam. We don't want to have Crazy for the Nazis when they take over, so stay home with us. You know, just to see you on TV night, last yeah, night. Yeah, I can stay home here where the Nazis already have taken over. I know. Right? <laughs> about that. But, you know, and just to see you last night on TV, I mean, just to see your name mentioned along with Dwight Lauderdale, I believe you're going straight up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ho- hopefully not that old, though. Okay. Have a great day, pal. See you later. God, he seems look old, doesn't he? Since he shaved off that mustache, what happened? He looks like something uh, like he got hit by the ugly stick. Not that he was ever a lovely guy. But, God, since he shaved off the mustache, he looks about 85 years old and about 10 times uglier than he used to be, which is, uh, thank God, why I looked so uh, pretty good on that thing last night. And you're right about Diane Magnum's hair, by the way. I wasn't going to say that until I saw the piece, but you're right. It's a mess. Here's the mobile in Oakland Park. Hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. What happened to all the Bruins fans? They used to pack the joint on the I have no idea, but that's an epidemic that is sweeping uh, sports all over the place. In Tampa, they're doing like five, 6,000 people a game. Uh, and the Islanders are doing like four, 5,000 people a game. The Devils have thousands and thousands and thousands of empty seats every home game. It's, uh, you know, the people just run out of cash. 
Yeah, they supposedly like the highest ticket price, I guess, the Bruins, the Bruins are one of the higher ones in the yeah, league. Yeah, they gave them the Fleet Enema Center. They stuck it yeah. right up there. Right uh, and they said, okay, we'll stay home, thank you. you right now. Every Bruins game, including the season opener, you can watch for a few minutes, and you'll see thousands of empty yellow seats. And, of course, yeah. the fact that the seats are yellow makes it so conspicuous. You know what I'm saying? You're right, because I watch it on the dish. You know, I got the satellite. Right, and the, right. But uh, as far as the Bob Kraft thing, I, I still think is a little bit of a deal going here. I think he just did that to get the politician in Massachusetts. He had the two, $2 million buyout, on this, yes, which he would gladly put a $2 million buyout to get the politician in Massachusetts getting their ass. Well, yeah, if, if, if they don't, uh, he's got to be out of his mind. Because if they, to if they, if they is think that Hartford is going to support a National Football League team or that people in Boston are going to go drive two hours to Hartford it's to go joke. watch a game, they're out of their minds. Yeah, you're right. And is there any truth to the rumor that... that uh, some guys, Corey and them guys doing their show from uh, Chuck E. Cheese coming on at 2 o'clock? Yeah, with Geldy. Yeah, that's right. Okay, Talk to then. you later. See ya. <laughs> I guess he must have known it was Geldy's birthday, and the guys were all putting up a, you know, a couple of bucks, having a big bag together. Hank is going to be a little bit late, okay? He's attending a funeral. May have something to do with this radio station. Bar. But nevertheless, what a banner day. George got his bonus. Oh! Not just one bonus, not just two bonuses, but three big fat oh! with a lot of tax money taken out. And I got a big fat bonus. That might have been, not a bonus, but a uh, whatever it was, a, ra a raise. Back pay. Back pay from uh, my race October 1st. With all those vacations you take, you still got a raise, is that it? Uh-huh. Yeah, right. And you deny you sleep in that bed with those two dogs? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. I'm telling you, the Grand Inquisitors, they're at it again. Don't forget, we'll be at Borders tomorrow, noon to 2. Borders and Kendall, Kendall Drive, and Dixie Highway. Please be there or else.